Welcome to the stream. I'm building a PNG tuber with the help of Mr. Geop. Ahoy, ahoy. Uh, if you don't know, which you, sh you should know, uh, Geop does great streams. A lot of like looking around at insane Zillow uh, situations. <laughs> I've lost my grasp on reality. Like it's wonderful. I I am continuously shocked and amazed and impressed at the the lack of taste that rich people have because a lot of these people got to be loaded to to build such like bespoke things in their houses uh, bespoke's a good five dollar word to go for Bespo there was a th there was one that we saw fairly recently that you've played control right oh yeah did it look like the oldest house mm. was it Let that bathroom was it that bathroom yes yes the whole winding corridor it's like that's a case of like what what was what was the plan here because <laughs> there's tackiness and then there's just okay was there a gas leak in here or something <laughs> yeah, what, what is there's this tacky and then there's madness and your, your streams delve into the madness quite often so this is veto veto tube i don't know how to say this yeah veto, veto tube veto tube but it makes little like png uh, tubers. And I don't know how to work any of it, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. Microphone device. Okay. One of these should pick up my yeah. microphone. There's wow. the input. Yeah. I'm a little vibrating deer. <laughs> so this actually gets into something pretty early on. Um, this, this will come in more use later. You see the bar on the right that's blue? bar on the right oh yeah this thing microphone uh, when, delay when sensitivity yeah when you're talking oh. this is something for later but that's kind of like the um i guess you'd say the how quickly it snaps back to the idle oh so if, you, if you've got something that's a little too jarring you can uh. scoot that around <laughs> if it's at the very top as soon as you stop saying something it snaps back and it yeah. looks it can look bonkers so man look at it go <laughs> yeah makes sense um so I'm wondering, first of all, because I think I might have jumped the gun here, but I could fix this really easily. My um, assets that I made have a green background. Should mm. it not? Should it just be a clear PNG? And then just it puts a regular it on. old PNG. Okay, I'm gonna fix that real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, I gotta go to Studio Paint. And apologies for not having the chat up and not having the freaking bits up and I just I had to use OBS and I'm usually on Streamlabs and it was not playing nice with uh, regards to importing all of my settings so I'm gonna fix that sometime so uh save save your bits and your bops and your boops <laughs> for later uh is it yeah let me capture this shit Window capture. All right, so. Make that a little mm. smaller here. I spy a burger, yep. Indeed. So, I decided to go for a little rascal eyes. Um. And it's just gonna go uppy downy, and I also put a shadow under here so you can, Ooh, you can see good that. Ooh, good eyes! <laughs> I can, look at that, look at that little doodad. But yeah, I saved all of them with the bright green background behind it, so now I get to save mm -hmm. all of them again, exactly the same, but with no uh, background like that. Um, PNG. I assume it's going to know that I want that to be an alpha layer, but I guess we will find out. Yeah, it should do it just fine. No, I've seen like, some people yeah. get really freaky with using uh, different GIFs for certain stills on this. For folks who are not familiar with this, um, the gist of this is you can stitch together a little PNG that does random, well, not random. It does a bunch of little things to add a little more variety or spice to things. You could have Ooh. it hovering around, bouncing in place. Um, it blinks at a slow, steady speed pace so if you want to have blinking you can do that and it'll just do it to make it look more active but also it has like a little transition effects and things 
you can just get very creative and do different uh, layouts however you want to with this. I'm excited but simple, to simple, but peek it's it. very handy. Okay. Got that little guy, and the last little guy is blinking. Little guy. I initially had the eyes uh, be uh, like a dull green, but then I was like, wait, green is bad. I can't use green. It's going to get like... <laughs> Color key. Well, you out. can um, you can actually swap out the background from green, I believe, in this. Oh, to so, a different thing to key out. Yeah, because oh. I know you've also got the uh, the lettuce on there. Oh, God damn it, the lettuce! I wasn't thinking about mm -hmm. that. <laughs> so we'll figure it out. We'll make it like purple or something in the background. Something it definitely has none of in it. Okay, I think, I think that's good. Let's see. Let's uncapture that. Let's go into here, I guess, closed mouth image. Now I have to find it in all my stuff. Good question, where is that? Um, I think I put it in stream assets because I'm smart. I am smart, hey, good for me. A closed mouth image with eyes open. <gasps> oh no, now I'm <laughs> warping between being a burger and a deer. <laughs> Okay, open mouth image. Okay. Ah! I love it already. Okay, closed eyes. Mouth closed. And closed eyes. Open. Wow. It's actually kind of great. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's simple, but it's really good. I just sort of like, ooh. Damn. This adds a little special something. It's well, nice. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye. Uh <laughs> yep. Short stream. <laughs> um, so if you want to, since you've already got the lettuce on here, it's going to mess with the green screening. I think probably gray might work. Um, below the microphone icon on the left, mm. that's the display settings. You click that, you can choose your background. Ooh. Oh, you know, blue would probably work just fine. I don't think there's any yeah. blue to be... Oh, not if there's, pink. If there's blue on your burger, you might want to send it back. I, <laughs> I think I'm a bit of a picky one. baby, though, so... <laughs> oh, there's, like, different motions? Oh, yeah. there's, like, a vibing motion? What the heck? Mm -hmm. So you can also play with those, <gasps> just decide, have it cycle oh. through what it does oh when God. it transitions or what have you. It floats around a little. Oh, <laughs> mm -hmm. that's so cute. <laughs> Whoa, this one's like really excited. Yeah, and Whoa. also... So happy. Yeah, You just make a really furious burger if you want. <laughs> I think just, just vibes. All I want is vibes. Floating around, doing vibes. Oh, there's like an extra little animation for when you start talking. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. I'm very amused by this. <laughs> yeah, it is it is very nice when you start seeing things snap into place on this. It's like, oh. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, do Might you get to like thing. do you get to like put hotkeys to like change like to different expressions and stuff? Yeah, there is something I'm seeing when you've got the talk animation going, if you want me to point something out visually. Yes, please. Um, uh, when it's talking, look at the right side. There's like a little ghostly uh, aura. Oh, damn it! I didn't erase all of that shadow. Okay, noted. I can fix that so quick. Okay, let's open. And with uh, eyes open and closed. Um, over here. Thanks for noticing that. Good eye. Okay, let's bring up this. I'll put you over here for now so people can still see it. Um, <laughs> where did it go? My window capture. There it is. Okay. Neato, neato, neato. Okay. How about I change that to uh, change the background so that's a little more easier to see. Oh yeah, wow, that's so subtle. Good eye, jeez, dude. Look at that. Would have taken me quite a while to notice Ooh, that. 
Why aren't you erasing? Uh, is it on a different layer than that, maybe? Yeah, what the heck? What layer is this? What's going on here? The bottom cheese layer. That's not what I expected. Oh. Bizarre. Okay. Look around, make sure there isn't any, any other auras afoot. Huh. Oh, Hamlin and Chad is pointing something else out. Oh. Um, we hadn't actually gotten to it yet, but they're also saying that uh, you can use a hotkey to change expressions. Like if you wanted, uh, I don't know, some if you had like different PNGs you wanted to slap into this, you could s hit a hotkey and it'd swap over to that blinking and talking animation. Oh, man. They're saying in chat that if you do that, it might be worth running the application in admin mode since they saw some issues. Just a heads up. Oh, admin mode. Hmm. Your that mileage was... may vary, though. Windows was... is a, a chaotic beast. It's It so is. I, I will see if uh, that becomes an issue, I guess. Starting small, though. Okay, that one is fixed. And then... The one with the eyeballs open. Yeah, I want a PNG tuber because there's a lot of days where I'm like, oh, I would stream if I didn't, you know, feel like not putting makeup on. Or I would stream, but my hair's a fucking mess or I have a huge zit or something. So. I'll also say that once you set up a little model or something, whether it be this or rigging anything, it's just kind of fun to watch it, and I, I often look at the models I'm running and focus on them when I'm talking. It gives mm -hmm. a weird brain feedback. Oh, <laughs> I do like it so far. How come? Oh, I have to like reconnect it. Open mouth blinking. And close mouth blinking. <clears throat> <clears throat> no, they are both closed. Wait a minute. Closed. Closed blinking. Open mouth blinking. Wait, wait, wait. Closed mouth blinking image. Open mouth blinking image. I'm going crazy. Okay. <laughs> okay. This one is that one. Okay. That aura seems to be gone. Again, good, good fucking uh. eyeballs. <laughs> The burger ghost is gone. <laughs> Those are the preservatives leaking out. Mm. Oh, so it's just like any any old hotkey will like this like so this particular amount of uh, images is now on a hotkey. And like if I were to change these images and then select a different hotkey, would that be then toggleable? Yeah, so on the right, you see that little plus icon? Like, below the trash oh. can, you have your burger. There's a plus. Ooh. If you click that, you can add another. So if you want to just use oh the gosh. same images, it may be different idling animations, or just different images entirely, you could put that to a hotkey to swap between them. Oh, man. I'm going to put angry eyebrows on real quick. <laughs> move this over... Man, these eyebrows are going to be so angry. Mm. Crash is saying, can we all appreciate that there are no pickles? Are there canonically pickles? Mm, canonically, no. Mm, but I do I gotcha. like pickles. Mm -hmm. You know, I like it separate from the burger, though. Is that weird? No, no judgment here. I, I don't enjoy it when burgers are... Um, I like when burgers are moist and like juicy, like meat-wise, but I don't like it when they're like wet. And like, you know, I don't like tomatoes on a burger because then it's like the consistency is all oh, wet yeah. feeling yeah. now. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I don't, I don't want that like kind of cold wetness. I don't like that. Uh, I was also just kind of curious if there was like an implied pickle or something. In there. <laughs> the essence of pickle is afoot. Yeah, retconned later on, you know. If I if I get really good at this shit, I will include uh, an animation for when I pog or uh, 
or, or when I get like super furious and then the pickles will just fly out of me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, since you can put a GIF on any of these um, expression sets, you know, of the four that are there, you can really just go, you can go bonkers with some stuff here. Oh man. For folks who are trying to figure this out, um, if you download VitoTube, there are four presets that are rolled into it that you can just crack open and look at. And within a few minutes, you can kind of look at it and go, oh, okay, I get the idea. Yeah, like, it's pretty good. <laughs> wow, heavy eyebrows. So got them Japanese ratchet and clank eyebrows there. Ooh, very strong, mm. very stern. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what do I actually want to do here? These are all like, I have a jillion fucking friend and brushes. Uh, it's almost a problem. Uh, but also there's lots of weird shit. I showed this off a little while ago, but like, there's a ton of like weird brushes that just like kind of automate. I was, I was looking exactly at that one because the X's, I was like, is that correct? But yeah, it looks like it is. Oh, oh teeth. There you go. <laughs> Ooh. There's like, oh God. A, there's a tentacle, like it's all, there's some crazy fucking brushes in here. Different stitches, like. Do you really just gr grab like a pack and they're in there or something? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this like. <laughs> 300 brushes? Eh, sure, whatever. Yeah, it had like a shitload. Like it was like 200, 300 brushes, inkers, like ridiculous. And they are from <laughs> friend, friend, friend and F-R-E-N-D-E-N. And it was like, I don't know, 20 bucks, 30 bucks. Like it was on sale mm -hmm. even from, so it was like even uh, like less expensive than that. Yeah, I grabbed a pack of uh, Premiere Transitions <gasps> for yeah. like five bucks or something, but it was like yeah. 200 or 300. I'm like, eh, I might find one in there I like. <laughs> Damn, hook a girl up, which, which, uh, which. Uh, I'll dig up the link. I haven't dug into them nice. quite yet though. I don't know why I'm being so like, Picky I was honestly, with... not to get too off topic, I was honestly on the fence about picking up and learning um, Resolve, but... I really wanted to, like, uh, we were gonna stream DaVinci Resolve on Giant Bomb and then the incidents oh. happened, uh, mm -hmm. but I wanted to, I wanted to see what's up with that dang thing. I know to. that some binding stuff, like if you set some bindings, it's relatively intuitive. I briefly popped into it, but it was like... It was like walking with two, two left shoes on my feet, I guess you could say. <laughs> it was like, oh, it's almost right, but out, nope, nope. That's how I feel about a lot of things in Clip Studio Paint, actually, because like there is certain oh. things where it's like, God, like 80% of everything is exactly the same, but like a little bit better, like, you know, the blending and stuff is way better than Photoshop is, generally speaking. Um, but like the masks masking layers like we were we we're mm. dealing with this on the first little episode of building a png tuber i was trying to figure out how to use masks because it's different because in photoshop you just use the brush tool and either paint with with um white to keep the image or black to you know block it out and mask it and mm -hmm. this wasn't working that way because this one it wants you to erase and not use white. And it was such a tiny little difference and it was tripping me up so bad. I was like, why the fuck isn't it working? Like, as just, some, mm. as a video I was looking at the other day said, it's kind of just uh, learning resolve in particular. It feels like every, it, you've got so many different tools in the video editors and all of them are in slightly different places. Ugh. And it's just, it's just a thousand cuts sort of situation. And it sucks too. Cause like, if you're used to Adobe products, a lot of those, like when they were first built, they were built by like engineers and programmers and not like artists. Like they mm -hmm. they didn't have like a ton of different artists they, they consulted because it was like 1990 fucking eight or something. Um, so like things are just in places that like the programmers thought would be a good place. And it's like, that's not <laughs> actually like, you know, normal working day stuff. I don't want that over there. That's stupid actually. Okay, Angry Berg. Uh, open. It's, it's honestly kind of funny to look at some of the neighboring Adobe products you can see are by different dev teams. Mm -hmm. You can see how some things are not consistent. <sighs> Little things, but it's just like, oh my god, please. <laughs> Even like between fucking Photoshop and Illustrator, like I will never learn mm, yeah, Illustrator yeah. because of that. And it's just, I could fuck. never click with Illustrator. Oh it was god. so strange. It's just rude. I don't know why they did all these rude things. 
Okay, let's let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm glad we're talking about this because it looks like we're channeling the anger into the burger quite well. <laughs> yeah, this is working for me. <laughs> <laughs> Angry Berg, open blink. Okay. It's hard oh, to name yo. all of these. Photoshop and Flash don't share shortcuts, which sucks since they're two favorite art programs. Oh, boy. It, yo, wasn't Flash the yeah, one that got discontinued? Flash I'm is trying dead to now, isn't it? Yeah. Like, Yo-Kai dead, dead. is uh, an old hand at Flash. <laughs> you, you did Flash stuff? I think it's animate is what it is now. Oh, they just name it something different? Yeah, Yo-Kai and Chat, they're the person who drew the rock form. Oh, I love that rock. We all love the rock. <laughs> Still use Flash, of course. <laughs> okay, I have to name this a totally different layer and call it Down Angie. Okay. Oh, I'm getting confused. What is what is up there? Okay. I hope that looks right. I'm gonna have to like see how it matches up. Let's see. Only one way to find out. Yeah. Okay, so that is Angry Berg closed. <laughs> <laughs> and blink. It's funny because this has a, a lot of crossover to the, or at least the, the parts of the brain that light up, it ties a lot into the whole live 2D rigging stuff. Cause it's like, oh, see how this works. I just did the keyframes. We'll see how natural it looks. And then it goes, ooh, no, <laughs> looks like crap. <laughs> the face doesn't stretch like that, no. <laughs> I've made a monster. All right, let's see here. Let's. Drag this window back over here. And okay, we're on state two. Let's let's call this K. I don't know. J and K. So closed mouth image is like closed mouth, open eyes. That's what they mean. Okay. Yes. Angie on the down low. <laughs> oh hell yeah. <laughs> it looks so like just peeved. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, then the open one that's angry. Yes. The closed mouth, closed eyes one. Okay. And then the closed eyes, open mouth one. Closed eyes, open mouth. Yes. Yeah. We're fully pissed off. This is great. <laughs> Yeah, and if you want to play around with those three bounciness motions, whatever, mm. I forgot what they're called as a group. You can also play around with those and see how it swaps between Ooh, them. Ooh, angy. Vibrating in anger. Ooh. Ooh. Why I oughta. <laughs> <laughs> and if I want to switch to face mode, it's J. Mm. I'm fine. I'm over it. Oh, that was fast. Okay. Seething. <laughs> oh man, this is cute. So, is there like a. Uh, I should be saving this, shouldn't I? <laughs> uh, yeah. Bottom. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay. Wow, it has its own like proprietary file extension. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. It's a dot veto mini file. Yeah, I think what? it's just a singular file by itself. No other stuff tied in there. How the hell do people make these things? It's like incredible. Really damn cool devs. <laughs> Making it free to use. Pro programmers are... I don't know, man. I don't know how they do it. Makes me mad. Why are they so smart? <laughs> there's this and there's also... Um, something something called Reactive by Fugi Tech that a lot of people use. And it's also a free thing. If you ever see a stream where somebody has um, other PNGs that light up and dim out, that's Fugi Tech. It's kind of the same idea oh. as this, but just simpler. Just got talking and not talking poses. Huh. But that links up through uh, 
it links up through Discord in that case. So if you're inside of a call, you can grab everybody who's in the call or you can just save somebody's oh. and just throw it into like a browser source. So like you could give your guest a VTuber, a PNG yeah. tuber too. Ooh. Yeah, I, I did that. Um, my mod, Draco, she's uh, she's not a VTuber, but I had her on a call and I just slapped I just I just applied her call to like a, a a little critter that she was cool with, and we just used that for the stream. <laughs> That's so neat! Oh my god. Okay, well, I think I need one more expression. Maybe like. Hmm. I feel like there's only hmm. two expressions for streaming. It's just normal and angry. <laughs> <laughs> Tired. <laughs> Those are the two. Tired. Oh, that's a good tired. one. Oh, tired. Let's th let's think about tired. Yeah. So, mm. Mm -hmm. so I'm gonna have to put it on this layer. This is where all my eyeballs are, but uh, I had to put a uh, a hue oh. saturation luminosity adjustment layer on them. Chat's also thinking green. maybe sad. <laughs> oh, sad. Yeah, sad and tired are very adjacent uh, emotions mm. for me. Um. Okay, sad. <laughs> uh, sad down. I'm really like losing track of like how I'm naming these things. DreamWorks face? No. No. Get out of here. <laughs> Ban that person. Who said that? <laughs> and I wonder if I don't even need another. I could just change the. If it's just sad, I could just change the. Um eyebrows and that'll just do it for me really yeah let's put this back on let's get different eyebrows sad eyebrows oh fuck i keep on thinking it's like photoshop and whenever you make a new layer it pops up a window that's like what are you gonna name this layer and then i just start typing oh shit and... right this is clip studio paint oh god i didn't read the top bar right? i was just thinking i was thinking wow this is kind of an, an interesting twist on what she has going on in the photoshop here Weird, i just huh? read the bar <laughs> Okay, sad brows. This is more like I pity. <laughs> I'm pitying something. <laughs> wow. Mm, really? Pity. Then, I expected more out of you. DreamWorks. <laughs> <laughs> Phew. I was drinking. Shit. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, this is just like feeling awkward. That's which is a very valid uh, streamer streamer emotion. This is true. It's very relatable, and that's very important in a and in connecting with the audience. <laughs> yes. Uh, hmm. Yeah, you know, let's th let's not call that sad brows. Let's call that awkward, awkward brows. Awkward brows down, because <laughs> I need ones that are higher up later. Okay. I'm still angry, I forgot. <laughs> I'm just over here vibrating in, in fucking fury. Just yelling in the back of the stream. I've got it muted on the side here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so that would be, uh, I guess, awkward. <laughs> Close. Oh, God, I'm really... My naming conventions, I should have figured this out ahead of time. Awkward. Underscore final. Underscore <laughs> <Yeah>. final final. <laughs> Underscore new final. New final. Actually final final. <laughs> uh, okay. Awkward. Close. Oh, how did I name? Okay. Eyes closed, mouth closed. That's how I'm, I was doing it. Okay. Uh, eyes open, mouth closed. Okay. Oh, Jeez. welcome in, Wobbly. So forgive me for not maintaining chat i'm not looking i'm sorry okay oh no this looks like a fucking <laughs> ah hey gal fucking face <laughs> yo i mean there's another one you want to give your burger like a little a bunch of anime features <laughs> oh my god i think they call that a charm point <laughs> what, what would the burger's charm point be charm hmm. point. i don't know that's what they call it oh i don't know about look this. at me i just i just do this shit on the side <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll still I'll call it awkward just to see like what it looks like with everything else. <laughs> okay. See it in motion first. I got you. Yeah, you know uh, how bad can it be? Uh, <laughs> okay, eyes closed, mouth closed. Hmm. 
Okay, there's that. Okay, now we gotta dupe this layer. Call it awkward brows up. Go over here. And uh this one. No, this one. And then move the brows up. <laughs> I do oh. like the, I like the expression when it's uh up here, and the eyes are open. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Awkward eyes open, mouth open. One of the reasons I can't fathom being a programmer is because look at all the problems I'm having just naming images. Like, how does anyone keep track of like actual like file naming conventions? I work with programmers. They can't keep that shit straight either. Don't worry oh, about it. <laughs> oh no, here's the real Ahigao face here. Let's just see what it looks like. Don't judge it yet. Okay, awkward. Eyes closed, mouth open. Okay. <laughs> It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Let's see. It's fine, it's fine. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. It's okay. Alright, um... Okay, hot, hot key. Um... I don't know. I guess H. You got JKH. It's in a weird order. Okay, uh... Open eyes, close mouth. Awkward... Okay. Open eyes, open mouth. Oh. Wait. Hmm. Yes. Unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Unfortunate. Concerned burger. Concerned. <laughs> <laughs> Very concerned. It could be a number of emotions. They're all pretty good though, honestly. <laughs> you know, it looks it looks fine with the um with the blink like that, I'm surprised that the eyebrows don't really, like... Them disappearing doesn't really seem to matter much. Mm. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, like, nervous, a little scared, if I'm playing a scary game. <laughs> oh. A little scared. <laughs> wow, this is fucking adorable, Jesus Christ. I'm cute as hell, everybody. Good news. I feel like there should be a happy one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with all the bad emotions. Free of first. emotion. Happy enough. <laughs> That's all you're going to get out of me. Uh. So I guess there's the alpha layer topic. Let me see here. The topic. Let's, yeah, because there's the blue background there that you're capturing there. Let's hit the hard topics. How do you feel about alpha layers? <laughs> I thought there was a, inside um, OBS, there's actually just an option where you go to properties, right click, and there's alpha transparency. I think you just have to go to filters and do chroma key inside of Streamlabs OBS. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, because I mean, that's what I do for my green screen. So I imagine it's the same thing, but you alpha out yeah. the blue. Let me, mm -hmm. uh, let me give it that shot, actually, while I'm uh, over here. Let's see, that would be on... Because it's it's a game capture. Because this is technically like on this is on itch.io, by the way. Uh, it's kind of a game. Oh yeah. Uh, so yeah, let's see here. Um, where the heck is the filters for this? I'm actually looking at a video oh, tutorial, transparency. <laughs> and the guy's blocking it with his green screen. I'm just like, where the fuck are you clicking? <laughs> what the hell? Oh, there it is. There it is. So yep. Got a little bit of blue around the edges, but it's not really that noticeable. Yeah, I think you can refine it if you wanted to, but eh. Mm. Yeah, there must be a way to do that. Yeah, it I think also matter. if you if the if your transfer ever gets to seventy two or beyond percent in the future, you could also just try the enable alpha transparency thing in OBS, and that should work out fine. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Kohatronic is saying, or Kojatronic is saying, is there any way? to have a smoother transition to the top half 
going up and down. Oh, uh, like hmm. um, like a tween, an animation tween. Hmm. hmm. I don't, I don't know. know. That might be something because I saw that they were working on a like a more robust version of this program. It's not out yet. Uh, a veto tube. So I wonder if like that would be in there. Some more advanced riggings, perhaps. I'm just I'm not really seeing anything like that. Just display settings. Uh, what the heck is Spout Stream? On. I don't know what Spout Stream does for me. Hmm. Yeah, Spout Stream. Weird. Image mode, sharp or smooth, it looks the same to me. There's the volume sensitivity, there's this other, this delay sensitivity, which just means that uh, it stays open for longer while I'm talking and doesn't give me like the flap. But I kind of like the flap. <laughs> it is a little jarring, but I like the flap. <laughs> if you're on Windows 64 bit, you can also use the spout interface to stream your VitoTube mini window to OBS. Capturing th through it completely hides the UI. Oh. Interesting. Okay. Noted. Noted. Okay, let's make one more face. One more little face. So, Geop, what have you been up to lately? Oh no, did I lose him? I don't know where the Geop went. He's gone. We're all alone. Geop's missing. <laughs> That's okay. Um, yeah, maybe like a panicky one would be cute, actually. Am I muted right now? Yeah, there you are. Hi. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that is strange. I just thought you want to have a quiet moment to yourself, or you went to the bathroom without saying anything. <laughs> I was talking for a bit, and I thought you you were just talking over me. I'm like, well, okay, fine. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, you were muted. I'm sorry. I wonder what happened. <laughs> oh, um, I think I know what it was. Okay. <laughs> I clicked out of the call. I mean, I was still in it, but I clicked off of the... Because somebody DM'd me something. Oh. Uh, and push to talk wasn't responding because I was out of the call window okay oh that makes sense i'm sorry for the awkwardness <laughs> so anyway what have you been up to lately <laughs> oh uh not too much just the uh, work streaming um doing side stuff and lifting that's about it yep lifting. that covers everything cool <laughs> I'm, I, I take pride in my predictability <laughs> oh no where did the, the eyeballs go How's FF7 going for you, by the way? Oh, it's going pretty good. <laughs> um, we just recently went to um, the Golden Saucer, which oh. was insane. Um, especially because it was like, I I don't know like hardly anything about Final Fantasy VII, which is crazy, but like, I didn't know like, like there's, I knew about the Golden Saucer, I didn't know about like anything surrounding it and I especially didn't know that the Golden Saucer segment is kind of bookended by like tragic backstory stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of weird, isn't so it? So <laughs> it's like so it's so whiplashy like you like right before you get there you go to this like busted up super poor town that Barrett's from and ev and everybody's like this is all your fault and he's like ah, I don't <laughs> want to talk about it never mind everyone died because of me and then it's like let's go to the go to fucking Disney World in the sky <laughs> with gambling. 
It's like, let's, well, Vegas was great. Let's go out and drive off in the desert in a random direction. See yeah, what happens to this then, small town over here. And then we like, you know, we had too much. We, we partied too hard or something. And we got sent to, to desert hell. And then we went back up and raised some chocobos. And everything was fine after that. Oh, a after someone uh, committed suicide in front of us. Then we went and raced, raced the funny birds. <laughs> it's an insane I thought, game. I thought... Barrett's whole backstory thing was way later, actually. It, it's really soon. Huh. I I did not know uh, at all. Like I didn't know like any of his tragic backstory to begin with. Um, I assumed it was tragic because he kind of acted like chip on his shoulder and all that stuff. Like he'd been through a lot, but mm -hmm. I didn't know it was gonna be that tragic. Shit. <laughs> I, I've I haven't played it since I was a kiddo, so it's interesting to hear that because I thought that was like. I, I just thought that was way later when it unpacked that. Boy. It, it's pretty soon when you get out of Midgar. Hmm. Like, I'm definitely playing it way too slow. Uh, but quite, quite a few hours into the game, but it's not like... Like, it's past Fort Condor. And like, did we do anything between Fort Condor and, and Poor Town from where Barrett's from? I don't know. Um... Well, if you're enjoying your time, I think you're not playing it too slowly. You're playing it just right. So hopefully you're enjoying it. <laughs> I'm mostly enjoying it. Yeah, I, I just feel like I am just not acclimated um, to random battles. Mm -hmm. And it kind of like sucks the wind out of my sails to be randomly battled so much. <laughs> Is the encounter rate really high? Any like most encounter rates are higher. High for me because mm. I suck. Uh, <laughs> um. If anybody ever brings it up and they ever discuss Beyond the Beyond to you, immediately shut them out. Beyond the Beyond? What is that? Do not that? look at that. What? <laughs> it has some of the worst random encounter rules. Beyond the other Beyond. Things. <laughs> it's one of those things where the battles take a long time. The battle ends, you take one step. Not exaggerating, one step, and you can go, whoop, here's another fight. Oh, fuck that. <laughs> These monsters were sitting over here waiting their turn. Absolutely fuck that. <laughs> No same thanks. same devs who did um golden sun but that was kind of their um their first try at that sort of <laughs> game yeah i'm trying to trying to get a a big eyeball situation but not not too different than the previous eyes because i foolishly did not save that to a, a layer the white of those eyes that would have been smart of me to do but alas, I'm not smart. So, sorry if I was talking over it earlier, but what are you, what are you doing with the eyes right here exactly? Oh, I wanted to uh, make one that's like, Ugh! like scared, like oh, shocked by something. Ah. Like, ah. Maybe like a scratchy black border or something. One of them anime doodle oh, eyes. Oh, could do. Um, where did that other ink inker go? I was trying to find something like that for uh, a reference for an emote, but I didn't know how the hell to describe it earlier today. Yeah, I don't know how you would. Mm. It's like a, it's like the, the white eyes with the black outline, but it's very scratchy around the exterior of it. I don't and know Google, what you would Google's call it. Google's like, yeah. what the fuck are you talking about? Here's some <laughs> anime girls. I don't know, man. <laughs> Yeah. You know what? Underneath that, or on top of that, is where I'll put Ooh. the... the oh god lines. <laughs> I don't know how tiny, to... Tiny, tiny pupil, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now that's... that's mortified. <laughs> so, quick question. I know this is just kind of a random one, but is there any reason why you decided on red for the eyes and eyebrows? You know, it was only because um, I thought, oh no, it's green and I fucked up, not knowing I could change the background and not be green. And now I'm, I'm too uh, deep in it. I gotcha. And I don't dislike the red. I think it's kind of cute. Mm -hmm. What is getting picked up there? Oh, it's the, that guy in the background. That oh, looks that wild. Makes that makes sense. Okay. 
There you go. That kind of like Jonan Vasquez haunted scratchy eye look. <laughs> It also looks kind of like losing your mind furious. Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> can't can't even express correctly how like losing your mind you are. I'm sure there's been a character with eyes like that in a Junji Ito thing somewhere, I could say. <laughs> Have you been watching yeah. any of the uh the crappy Netflix ones? You know, funny story. <laughs> I've never read anything by Junji Ito. <gasps> Get I've out always of town. absorbed images. What? I mean it's it's one of those things on the internet that you just you just pick up on things eventually, but I've never read them. That is really wild. <laughs> so I'll just see the horrifying ones out of context. I'll be like, oh, that's messed up. <laughs> well, what up was I doing? Context, too. <laughs> uh, I... It's like there's some that I'm scared to describe out of context because I don't even know if I pictured them correctly. Oh man, God. I'd love to hear you describe some of these. Once, oh, once I'm done with God. this, once I'm done with this particular emotion, uh, tell me, tell, try to describe some Junji Ito shit to me. I'll try to draw it. <laughs> <laughs> so just think about it, save it for a little while, and then we'll do it. If you want to hang out <laughs> longer. I'll look at a thesaurus and try to figure out the right words to use here for this. Because <laughs> I'm like, God, this is going to sound gross if I get it wrong. <laughs> Um, okay, so we got that one. We need, um... Well, I guess if... If my eyes are closed, then it would have to be the black outline, because it would look weird if it switched to... Yeah, if it switched to that color, that'd be weird. Okay, um... Um... I'm just gonna call that scritchy. That's a word. Well, someone in chat, uh, but the Jesus was asking, what's the origin of the name Void Burger? Close, Scritchy. Um, so, wow, Scritchy, even though it's a word I just made up, is hard to spell. Um, so basically, the origin is that I was in college and, um, we had one of those, like, um, takeout slash delivery menus. Um, and it was just like, it was for a place that was just like, kind of every every sort of american food like you know your hot dogs your your hamburgers all sorts of stuff like that whoa that's weird didn't mean to choose that um i hit the wrong thing there uh but you know chicken tendies they had some random mexican food they had some random like italian food it was like every sort of thing and with that you know comes Obviously, like pictures of the food, examples of the food. They're all stock photos. It's like, you know, a picture of a pizza, like on a plate, on a, you know, someone enjoying it or whatever. Um, and then there was just a picture of this burger that you see here. Um, I scanned it directly from the menu because it was just a picture of this burger just with nothing for a background. It was just black. So like the avatar you've seen me running around with for all this time, like that is simply what was on this menu is just this burger in a void and we just thought like wow nice I'll, I'll get the void burger that seems good and then i thought to myself that's a really good like something awful username <laughs> and that's i that's actually didn't know this was the actual burger from this that. Is, i feel like i, I feel yeah. like i heard the story before but i did not know this is the og burger this is this is it oh oh yeah i'm gonna fuck this up over here yeah Yeah, if you zoom in, you can see like the actual scan lines all over this thing. It's like a like a low quality <laughs> image from a crappy menu that I scanned. So it has this like oh no, this like pattern on it that's like dithered. Oh yeah, I was about to say mm, bread doesn't cut that way. <laughs> <laughs> it's crumbly. Uh, yeah, that's the story. I had I had a way worse uh, something awful username before Void Burger, and it's like that sucks. Let's change it to this. <laughs> Everyone loves food-based usernames. Uh, eyes closed, mouth closed. Okay, and then we do this. Copy those. Let's make this call this up or uo if you want to miss the uh 
the P. Sorry for the silence, by the way. I just don't want to talk when you're in concentration on this here. No, it's okay. <laughs> I don't mind. Okay, closed, scritchy, up. These are great words that I'm putting. Hey, if it if it works, it works. There we go. Okay. Export single layer PNG. Um, eyes closed, mouth open. <laughs> this is so hard to keep track of. I understand why you'd want me to not be distracted by you, but you can you can talk when I'm when I'm uh, arting. <laughs> okay, where's the other one? Yeah, there it is. Okay. Add have, up. have you ever thought of actually just doing like an actual redrawing of this burger itself at some point? Hmm. I've done a couple of different like renditions of it over time. Hmm. Like on I, my... I, I, th I thought you... um. I thought I saw a sketch or something where you were working on a burger face or something recently. Am I making that up in my head? I don't know. I might be. <laughs> Very active imagination. I need a scritchy up here too. Wait, what? Oh no, it looks worried. <laughs> it looks very <laughs> mad. <laughs> <laughs> so concerned. Oh my god, I'm like losing track of these. Okay, so this is fine up there. I need ah uh, down. I, I need I need ah uh, up to be up more up. That's the thing. Okay. There you go. And also to be on the correct layer. <laughs> there, the scritchies. Okay, okay. We're figuring it out. Okay. Mm. Um yeah, I've done a couple different like renditions of the Berg over over time. There's like a pixel one. There's like one or two pixel ones I've done over the years. There's the, the one that's on my Patreon page is uh, mm -hmm. one that I made. I don't know. But I, for what it's worth, I did try to like tin eye search the burger and see if like am i stealing this uh like should i oh, be see if they see if I, they lifted it from somewhere for yeah, the like, menu image <laughs> like sh should i be paying someone for using this stock photo uh is basically <laughs> i was like worried like am i gonna be in trouble if i keep using this um There's someone out there it. squatting on burger image copyrights just waiting <laughs> to snag one up i'll wait until she, she finally gets we got super one super famous and i'll come down the hammer will come down <laughs> okay, eyes open mouth open I think that's all of those ones. Yes. Okay. Uh, Far Columbia actually brought something up I'm curious about. Um, they mentioned Tiger in Space being a good avatar. I was curious, did you, not to just poke at an old thing, but did you ever find out a context or reason behind the Tiger in <laughs> Space thing? There I've is, been thinking about that. The reason that. is that Sam Barlow's a dipshit who loves referencing things that makes him sound smart. I mean, it's just like, so I'm trying is, to think of just was it like this really weird reference to some 17th century novel or some shit or it what? It kind of is. <laughs> I don't know how old this this novelist is. It's not like Jean-Paul Sartre ass old, I don't think. But because I remember like, like uh, yeah, Jeremy Blaustein when he was localizing like Symphony of the Night, some of the opening stuff was very obscure references that nobody really picked up on or knew about. And I was like, <laughs> is that the same thing here or what? Yeah. So like the. There, there is some sort of quote, and I completely forget off the top of my head who wrote it, but it was part of like a, a philosophy book of some sort. Um, and it was about like, uh, it was comparing like, oh, God damn it, I don't know. I don't fucking know what it means. <laughs> it's like the, the, the sexual act is in time as the tiger is in space. Okay, like so the there quote. was, there was something, that's all. It, it's like, it's like a, bigger quote that brings up sex so i don't know i don't know but but the psychiatrist wanted to flex on cheryl that he's read a bunch of books uh <laughs> and you know saying that you're you're obsessed with sex you know it's weird how much i remember about that that game through that lp in particular <laughs> that's all i remember is the let's play and just being like oh i don't like this <laughs> it's like 
I blur over on a lot of things in the Silent Hill games, but like <laughs> several points of that Let's Play and several points of Bob's Homecoming Let's Play oh my are God. just seared into my fucking brain. Oh, Bob's Homecoming Let's Play is so fucking otherworldly funny. Yeah, the editing and, and stuff he was doing back then was really, really insane. Like he did like a Street Fighter thing at the start of one of the episodes oh and I, man. He like, he changed the fucking editing game with yeah, like- Yeah, remember when they, were, when they were still using annotations on YouTube, remember he had the whole choose your own path thing he was doing. Oh God. And, and then, then like and it then totally YouTube broke the LP. Pulled those out. Oh, it was so fucking tragic. <laughs> my, my beef with Sam Barlow is so old that the original like when i was first writing like a script like i'm gonna make like a video about this guy's weird shit that i don't like like it was under the impression that i could use youtube annotations to make people watch the videos out of order if they wanted to <laughs> because that even back then 10 years ago that was his fucking thing contextless clips it's like oh you can watch this video in any order you want fucking go ahead <laughs> But then they took away annotations and I was like, well, never mind. And I shelved it for five more. There goes more. my plan. Yeah, I shelved it for three more years, enough time for him to make another game where you do the same fucking thing over and over again. <laughs> yeah, not to, not, to poke the, not to poke the same topic over and over. I was just really curious because somebody brought up the tiger in space and I'm just like, gosh, I want to know. <laughs> Sex is death. It's a leap into the void. The great loss of self. The tiger in space. Shit's deep, man. Okay, man. <laughs> sure. It, that explanation works really well when it's tied to this expression. <gasps> Just <Fine>. insane, <laughs> exasperated face. <laughs> Don't you get it? Don't you, Don't get, you it? get it? I'm completely normal. I'm so normal for caring about this. I care about it the correct amount. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> okay. So, wow. We got all sorts of little guys here. Oh, I shouldn't have made that s because what if i'm playing a wazd game that would be silly um i guess g i don't know like g i'm scared <laughs> i don't tell anyone oh this is a cute little cute little guy we got over here i love him uh, yeah, i'm pretty sure if if you have a stream deck you'd probably tether tether it to one of those or ooh. something maybe mm, i don't have a stream deck but chip does i will steal it yeah, because I know stream decks, you can, I know, I, I don't know if they have anything that ties into this directly, but you could just put on something weird like those F13 through F24 or whatever keys that are on <laughs> keyboards anymore and just tell it to look at that. Oh, man, that's true. We, we use the Steam Deck for uh, Gex for Life to put all the Gex quotes on different buttons. <laughs> oh. It's pretty good. And then if you played them <laughs> all at once, it sounded horrific. <laughs> Just every single sound clip at once. It wasn't every, it was definitely a select couple ones that we liked a lot. Mm. Um, you know, where's Jane Fonda and stuff like that. <laughs> and there was some joke about the Pentagon. Um, and I, it, it was my suggestion that we just cut the clip short and just have Gex just saying the Pentagon. <laughs> and they're just stopping and there's nothing else. It worked out really well, actually. Okay, I, I want to... So you don't know anything about Junji Ito stuff, huh? No, just images out of context going, man, that looks fucked up. <laughs> well, here's a picture of a cat. Okay, that's cute. Ooh, cats. <laughs> the cat that's one's what really good, on Twitter. I know he likes cats a lot. I know that. <laughs> but... So if you, if you were to describe a Junji Ito image... <laughs> So the one there, there are several, but the one that sticks to my mind above the others is uh, as somebody somebody called it in chat. It was the zit one, so to speak. Oh no, I remember yeah. that one. There's I was like, like oh, <laughs> yeah, it's because there's the weird faces, there's the eyes, there's the this hole was made for me. But that one was just like ooh, yeah, no. it's, it's someone like uh, yeah. <laughs> doing this do i have something on my face i don't know the context behind it <laughs> and then like all this fucking pus is coming out of their face mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. damn that's definitely what jinji ito's stuff looks like but the worst part is that her mouth is open because she's screaming at it <laughs> <laughs> this like, really sucks ah it's like close your mouth girl <laughs> <laughs> this guy's 
oozing on you. They actually I really, like they animated really love that one. hearing about how happy and pleasant Junji Ito is. And then you look at like uh I don't know, some other creator in Japanese media, like I think like Miyazaki. Miyazaki is the how grim he always is. It's funny to see the two opposites there. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, Miyazaki's miserable and Junji Ito is just like living his best. Just a pleasant little guy. <laughs> He's just a nice dude. He actually he went to dental school. That was his first uh his oh. first career was he was a dental assistant. And uh he all he also liked drawing and in his spare time while he was being a dental assistant, he like drew some of his first ever manga and it like won some competitions and stuff like that, and then he got picked up and he was like, Well, never mind about dentistry. <laughs> <laughs> Did he ever do weird body horror stuff with teeth in particular? There's a couple. Um, there's one like a... where there's this girl who... Um, oh, how do I describe this fucking one? Jesus. I, think I actually they... don't even know how many Miyazaki... Or not Miyazaki. I don't know how many Junji Ito short stories there are even. Buddy. Hundreds. Yeah. This man is really? prolific. He... Oh my Ooh. God. Like oodles and oodles. Um, yeah, when Ito does teeth, it does look very good. Um, but, uh, yeah, there was one where, um, there was a, uh, young girl, not like a child, but like a teen girl or something like that, who was very, very beautiful. Her sister was really jealous of her, blah, blah, blah. Her mom hated the ugly sister and like the pretty sister. And then one day they got into a car crash and the pretty sister's face got smashed in in a certain way. And you could see that she was actually made of layers, like she didn't grow normal she grew like a tree how trees oh. have rings mm -hmm. so she had rings of just like body like layers so, and all the way inside if you if you like took off all the skin and all that stuff there was like layers and layers of teeth all the way back like all the teeth she had ever had like she never lost any Ooh. teeth it just growing and growing and growing and then like at the end like the mom goes crazy and like rips off like all of the skin to get to like you know the youngest version because she missed her baby or something like that and then like the last panel is this horrific fucking image of like this young looking like almost baby like head and then like it's stretched out to a human like normal adult proportion like if you take a baby and just stretch armstronged it like all mm. the way to be like their feet are this far away from their head. Oh, it's awful. Oh, what a fucking image. There was like a, um, there was like a behind the scenes, uh, there's like a documentary where he was drawing that panel. And I was like, what the fuck is this from? And then it came out and I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> um, but like the documentary was just like about him and his like process and how like he, he has made like, you know, you take like your little like drawing you know digital pen he's like m bespoke made it like perfectly fit his hand with like different like molds and stuff like like uh sculpey and stuff like mm -hmm. that so that's perfectly ergonomic for his hand he has like this little like clicker device that's like keyed up to different shortcuts so he never has to like touch his keyboard and stuff like that it's wild <laughs> oh jeez we were that? talking about teeth stuff. I was also thinking this is a totally different direction. <laughs> we were talking about the teeth stuff. I was thinking about uh, another series I've never read, but I know of, and it was a uh, Vinland saga. And the thing I've always heard about that was the artist is incredibly hyper-focused on hands. Ooh. Like making them very, very intricately detailed, like somebody who's, um, somebody works a lot. Their hands are incredibly torn apart. Wow. And just they they really focus on that so so much. I've always I'm, I'm read always, about I'm shocked when anybody can draw hands. <laughs> That's why AI can't fucking do it. It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> Five hands? Shit, I can I could do I can do seven on one hand. You uh... wanna see it? <laughs> It's either seven also or none. Teeth. That's all you get. <laughs> also teeth. It just seems they mm -hmm. I I the only thing I like about AI art is is that when it fucks up. Like, I don't want it to ever get good. I don't want it to replace mm -hmm. artists. I fucking hate AI art ethically and morally. I wish it was this harmless thing that you can just type stuff into and it just made you weird shit and nobody ever used it for things that a human should be making. Because one of those things is just like, I would love to see more wrecked up hands because they're so disturbing. I just love it. 
it's I really enjoyed using it for shit post stuff. Like I think one of my favorites that I tried at random was biblically accurate grimace. Oh, biblically accurate is just a good mm -hmm. like prompt one of them to use was in just general. Like, one of them was chef kiss so beautiful. It was just like oh, you showed me this and said yeah, it's in the Bible. He'd be like yeah, sure. <laughs> Why are there pictures in the Bible? I don't know. Shut up. Oh, the the manga I forgot about this. The manga I was talking about that Jinji Ito mm -hmm. made with the girl that has a bunch of layers. Why did I forget this? It's called Layers of Fear, like the game. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's uh, I guess I can't wolf. Google that now. No. I'm gonna get mixed results. Ugh. I just I just went to like, you know, Google image search. I was like, oh, I'll show them. And then I was like, no, they don't want to see this. It's gross. Like, <laughs> never mind. There's like, you know, peeled off faces all over the place. There's some titties on the ground. It's a mess in here. This is the craziest oh. fucking panel a human being has ever drawn. <laughs> Jeez. Awful. And for some reason, they animated it um, in the newest Netflix season, which, by the way, sucks. Don't don't watch it. Uh, it's not a good representation of, like, the stories and how good they are and how well-paced they are, because for some reason, like, I don't know, the, the, peop the folks that made the anime, not only is it, like, very cheap-looking and all the backgrounds are absolute perspective nightmares um <laughs> they don't look right um but they just don't understand like the pacing of horror and like also how to score and add sound effects to enhance that like mm -hmm. it just it's just missing the mark and like i feel like junji ito could translate to anime if it had like uzumaki is getting you know adapted and it's it keeps getting delayed over and over again and i'm like good because it needs to look and sound good because no one else you can't rush this this is a guy that like when he draws something it's the most detailed thing you've ever fucking seen in your life so like if you so make that I, I think animated, it was it's really hard i thought it was a few years ago maybe not i thought i saw a junji ito thing animated within the last few years was that netflix I wasn't mm -hmm. sure how if, if there's like a newer one or not. But this yeah, was there like, was this there would was, have been like. I knew it was bad though from quality standpoint. Yeah, there was there was two like Netflix attempts that are basically they're like seasons like of two different things. So there's like a whole bunch of episodes in each one of them. Um, but yeah, it was by the same company that did the first one, and it stinks. And it's like, Ooh. man, you can't. There's so many like ones that are just like this is a slam dunk i'm gonna like skip to the one that i know is a really good story really iconic really fucking weird and they missed the mark on that one too and it's like it was right there like how do you fuck this up Ugh. it's kind of like the same thing with berserk mm. you know the whole cg issues and, yep. with that it's just sort of like oh yeah people this is fantastic you do a halfway sensible adaptation it'll be great and it's just like oh no oh it's no too detailed i think yeah. You know, like, because cause Miura also, like, has an insane sense of detail in his work. Yeah, because even... The other thing was just even if they got the detail down and the computer stuff, it's just that... Uh, well, I'm, I'm sure you've seen memes and images of just how they really goofed things up across the board. Yeah. Guts, like, <laughs> like walking to the camera. Guts having, like, an eight-pack, I think, and then scooting off screen. <laughs> scooting off screen. <laughs> oh, man. I'm like looking at some panels from Berserk and being like, yeah, how do you, how do you fucking, how do you adapt that? It's too nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yo, I was, um, I remember Dora Hedora. They did an okay job. I, yeah. I couldn't, did you ever click with Dora Hedora, Hedora, by the way? I can't uh, even say the name. Dora Hedora. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, I love Dora Hedora and, uh, I fucking love, um, <laughs> all the characters in it. What's so, his name? Kaimon or something? I bounced off the anime pretty hard. Did you mm -hmm. ever read the manga? No. Okay. Did I'm not sure if it? I should give it another go or not. <laughs> what what made you bounce off? I don't I don't know where it was going, and I was getting very lost in the world building toward the end of the first season. It did kind of feel like, you know, to enjoy it, you kinda of have to just like go along for the ride and not try to like not get caught up in like the mechanics of stuff mm -hmm. which like once i did that i liked it a lot more um mm -hmm. and then like once you know i got invested like by the time i got invested it was like the end of the season and i was like no what happened 
I don't know why it's happening, but I care that it's happening. <laughs> that did that does have a second season coming at some point, right? I, it, I think it does. And like the first one was like really gorgeous looking. Because I know Beastars got two seasons. I'm pretty sure there's another Unfortunately. one. Unfortunately. Oh, Second yeah, season like sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I, I liked it, but it was kind of like, well, I'm not. I guess I wasn't too picky with it. I don't know. Mm. I just wanted so it to stay. It uh, I wanted it to stay like you know how it was, which was like bit of a murder mystery, but like mostly just yeah. like this will they won't they romance story that I got like. I was surprised it went the way it did, honestly. I thought that was yeah. going to be like a bit, I thought that was going to be a mystery through for a longer stretch of the series. So when I solved it, I was kind of like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Then it became about the mafia. And I was like, I don't care about the mob. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really care about the mafia. I Too bad. About, They're here now. I care about whether or not the, the, the bunny and the wolf are going to fuck, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm a simple simpler person. Simpler times, simpler I'm, times. I'm a simple person. I'm down with that simple <laughs> plot. I don't need it. Also, like, fucking Lagoshi had this whole, like, huge, like, I'm going to, like, become, like, an ascetic monk. I'm going to, like, fucking center myself and do all this training and be able to live without meat. Uh, yeah, and then there was the whole... Um, and then he fucking powers up. The final up. scene stuff. Yeah, yeah that yeah, was he, a little he, disappointing, he I thought. Fucking yeah. fucking eats meat, goes Super Saiyan, and wins. And it's like, what was the point <laughs> of doing that? <laughs> Fuck you. Ah. And then I found out that the, the lady who makes that manga, her dad is the mangaka for something that's super shonen, and I'm forgetting yeah, what it is. Uh, Grappler Baki. Yeah. Oh my god, yes, Baki. And it's like, this feels like maybe her dad was like, hey, you should put like a big fucking like fight in here. And it's like, <laughs> man, just let her, just let her be a furry and just, like, <laughs> I don't want them to fight. I want them to fuck. Please stop. Um, yeah, that was disappointing. <laughs> yeah, I gotcha. I, I, I agree with those changes. I was, I was kind of okay with it, but I agree on those same points. I was kind of like, hmm, okay. Hmm. Also, like, wasn't there, like, oh, yeah, season two, like, they introduced this character, the, the snake? Remember that big snake? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, like, the school, like... Janitor, was it, or... Janitor, janitor. Like, secure, security, security person. Yeah. It's like, first of all, you did a bad job, someone got murdered. <laughs> Second of all, you're doing a bad job now because, like, you're acting like you know who did it, but you want Lagoshi <laughs> to figure it out. Uh, I can't remember a thing about that character, but I yeah, thought people liked him a lot. They were or just didn't. there to make I can't the, recall. They were just there to to make the murder mystery get solved as quickly as possible. And I was like, no, <laughs> that's the thing that's good, <laughs> along with the we're animals time here. that might. Editor says we got to wrap this up. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> it just felt like yeah, like a big band aid. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm stuck being scared. Let's not be scared anymore. <laughs> Let's be chill. <laughs> hey, just vibing. There it is. Just vibing. Yeah, we're cool. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I do wish there was like a little um, gradient of movement like between. But hey, mm. that might be for uh, when they come out with the later version of. Uh, yeah, Vito I was uh, I was peeking over at their website. They have some parts of it that they've pushed to uh, GitHub as open source, but that's kind of. Um, Maybe across the past year or so, it looks like there hadn't been too much checked in other than some little bug fixes. Hmm. But I mean, they're doing it for free, so I think it'll just get yeah. done when it's done. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not complaining. <laughs> yeah, works great, though. It's just I mean, a, a wish I had it, but I'm not, it's not a deal breaker sort of situation. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it looks like it snapped together pretty fast. That's good. That was that, that was easy as hell, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and it was nice hanging out with you. Do you get do you gotta run somewhere? Do you wanna keep talking about anime? What do you wanna do? I got nowhere to go. Oh. My work's done for the day, so nice. I'm cool with hanging out. <laughs> yeah. I could hang out a little longer. Maybe like a half hour more or so. Why not? Alright, sounds good. So to to get this little avatar into OBS though. Do hmm. I like drag the? Where is this? Where did I put this thing? Hmm. Stream assets. Like it's called like avatar dot uh, veto tube mini or whatever it is. Um, 
Well, you're already capturing it from OBS right now, are you not? Or um, so I'm I'm so I was just wondering if like it's another proprietary thing that launches, or like when you use your your VTuber, you just open VitoTube Mini like the app you just, every time. You just open VitoTube and have it going in the background. Oh, okay, okay. I wasn't sure. Yeah, it's, it's kind of the same thing with uh, VTube Studio. You just pop it up in the back. You do whatever you need to to get rid of the background colors and okay. you just go with it from there. What's the best way to read Ito online? I don't know. There is a lot. Like, you can just, like, Google and, like, find a lot of scams. Like, there's a ton. <laughs> there's, like, a lot. But... Uh, thankfully, like, if you want, if you want to be legitimate about it, you can just go to fucking, like, Barnes & Noble, and there's, like, huge Junji Ito sections now, because they come out, they come out with these beautiful hardcover big boys all the time that are just, like, anthologies, so it's, like, a bunch of different little stories. Mm -hmm. Unless you're getting, like, Uzumaki or something that is, like, a one big long story. So Uzumaki, so he's he's very big for his one-offs and short stories. Uzumaki is like a bigger, longer work of his. Yeah, that was like a three-volume, I believe, manga. Um, and is uh, it kind of like his magnum opus of things, or just? Well, I think his magnum opus is probably Tomie. That's the thing he's most known for. Which I think Uzumaki's better personally. Um, it's mm -hmm. a little more like of a contained story, whereas Tomie is a lot of anthology uh, stories about basically like Junji Ito invented a cryptid um, <laughs> and the cryptid is a girl that cannot die and also she's just kind of a bitch um, <laughs> <laughs> just a real bitch. she's just a Becky she's oh my kind god of a bitch. Um, <laughs> but yeah she's like, she's like this, this uh, weird force that just appears and disappears and goes all sorts of places it's very much based on oh i'm blanking on the name does she Umez. do anything troublesome or is she just really passive aggressive no she like kills her boyfriends a lot and people get oh. so people get obsessed with her people don't don't date an scp don't. we keep coming back to this everyone <laughs> don't do it everyone like falls in love with her is she's like cursed to be like incredibly fucking uh, beautiful and like people okay fall in love with her, get obsessed with her, and end up, like, killing her or killing for her or killing themselves. And it's just, like, this, like... Yeah, she's like the ring, but a babe. I don't know. <laughs> so she's she she's the ring lady, but she has really nicely done hair, though. Oh, she's gorgeous. letting it go everywhere. She's gorgeous. <laughs> but Uzumaki is much more of a story with a, like, beginning, middle, and end. Well, mm. end. <laughs> and um but like the way that Uzumaki ends is very like well most of this guy's stories like in a classic horror sense kind of end like in a way where it's just like the evil will continue it, like kind of implication where it's not it's not like the heroes win the end mm -hmm. they were happy after that point uh, very few of his stories end like that and a lot of them are just like <laughs> It's just like the last story that happens, and then it's just like, well, the world's fucked, but mm, shit just yeah, ends. I, I honestly figured that, yeah, most of Ito's stuff probably does end with, by the way, everybody dies or something. <laughs> there was so funny story about like you know his endings, and you know a, a grand majority of them just like kind of abruptly stop with like a scary looking scene, and then just kind of stops. Mm -hmm. I did not know that Gyo, which is the one with the, I'm sure you've seen this panel with the shark that's gashunk gashunking into someone's house with spider legs. Uh, actually, that's <gasps> not conjuring anything up. No, you've seen this. No, you've seen. I remember a shark no. with spider legs chewing into a house, I think. Hang on. It's like a meme. <laughs> Should I Google this? Hang I'm on. Googling it for you. Okay. Okay, open image in new tab. Okay, window capture. My Google Chrome. Don't worry, I don't have any fucked up porn of my friends in the tabs like a goddamn monster. <laughs> oh god, I saw a mention of that the other day. What the? Fuck that I've guy. I've definitely never seen this. Fuck that guy. You've never, you've never seen this. Sh 
No. Kari, jump out the window. Swear to God, never seen this. You were on something awful. You have seen this. There's, there's no way. There's a lot of shit on those forums, Voidburger. Dude, there's like no way you haven't seen this. Like what? I have not. I've I've seen a lot of I've seen a lot of his stuff and it sticks in there. This didn't. I'd remember a great white going, hey, what's going on in the living room? Like it's so memed. It's being memed here. It's hard to find the original. It's been memed so much. What the hell? <laughs> but Oh my god, Gyo is a really fucked up one, by the way. Basically, it has spider legs. You yes, said? yes, it has spider. I mean, legs. I just assumed it was just from looking at this. I figured it was just like doing a crocodile mile sliding through the house somehow. <laughs> no, he's got he's got spidey legs, and he goes gashunk. Uh, open a new tab. Goon, yeah, stolen look. goon valor. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, like there's just big ass, big ass shark. I have platinum. I earned this. <laughs> wow. Ah, yeah. uh, good oh, God. Man, but yeah, the the plot of this is that one day all the fucking fish come out of the water, and it's a big problem. Um, <laughs> and including the really mean ones like sharks uh, and giant squid and whales. Like they're all they're all dead fish, by the way. That shark is dead. It's being puppeteered by those leggies. Oh. And like, so it's kind of a mystery. Like, what the fuck's happening? What are these leg things that run on dead creatures? This is awful. Um, okay. Because I was about to say, well, sharks wouldn't all be assholes. But then again. <laughs> uh, it's, it's implied that like these machines are like really crazy. I'm getting to that, Josh Moni's call. Cool your jets. I'm getting to it in the chat. But. So basically, you got these spider leggy things. People are like, what the fuck is this? There's like some scientists trying to figure it out. So there's a plot. The plot is kind of like one of those old B movies almost where you've got like. Not, not to interrupt. Are they able to actually kill these? Or I mean, it's just the sheer number or are they just. There's just a fuck, fucking ton of them. Okay. And they're puppeteering things that are already dead. So it's like, how do we kill these things? Like they're being like protected by these giant hunks of dead flesh. So it's hard to hit them or kill them. I mm -hmm. think you can incapacitate them, but like there's just a, the sheer number of them. There's like a jillion or something. I but, gotcha. um, so yeah, and eventually it's you know revealed that um, this was like a government <laughs> bioweapon gone wrong <laughs> somehow. Teehee, I, oops. I don't remember exactly why the government wanted to make walking dead things but that was something that went awry it like got let loose in the ocean and then everything went to hell from there um but yeah once all of the you know dead fish decay fully they don't have yeah it's like a chemical weapon testing thing that went wrong you're right josh monies but like yeah they're like robots that run on meat or something so once they run out of meat they run out of uh, the sharks and the squids and the whales what now well Bad news, humans are next. So there's the the whole like last like issue and a half of, of volume and a half of this stuff is just like they have switched over from their their meat diet uh, to completely to humans because they run on methane gas and like decomposing gas. Huh. So the back end of this fucking manga is disgusting because it's all tons of naked bloated bodies with tubes coming out of the front the back all over just farting everywhere and powering <laughs> these death machines and it's just like how is this gonna work out and like the last fucking panel is just like and the battle carried on for many years or something like that it's like what what do you mean <laughs> <laughs> and it smelled terrible. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people are just like gagging and gagging because the smell is so awful. There's ghosts, maybe. I don't remember. But because Jinji Ito's stories are so like abrupt in their endings oftentimes, I did not know that Gyo was like a two or three part volume series. I read the first Gyo. I got to the last panel of that, which is uh, the protagonist uh, falls into like a uh, like a drainage ditch or a sewage di ditch and it is just crawling full of these things like tons of like sm smaller ones but but oodles and oodles of fish and they're all dead and stinking and he's like sinking into it and like he blacks out and i was like well that's the end he dies in the fish <laughs> good god i had no idea so there was more and it gets so much worse <laughs> it gets so much so worse 
<laughs> so that is also a longer one, kind of like Uzumaki? Mm-hmm, yeah. Ah, uh, okay. Hmm. I don't what want a to start reading through Junji Ito stuff what then. What a carpy ending. Shame on you. <laughs> Shame on you, Hamlin. <laughs> oh my god, yes, there's a circus! Oh my god, I forgot about the circus judgmonies. Oh my god. There's like a dead thing circus. Like some people go crazy and are just like, we love the dead things. We're gonna make a circus with the dead things. It's like, what the <laughs> fuck? They're wonderful. Is this? Look at how well they can juggle bowling pins. Look ba at this. It's amazing. Ba ba ba. Come to the stinkiest circus in town. <laughs> Oh, do I have one of these here? Uh, oh, I used to I'm have just picture, one. picturing one of these things lifting up one of those big old circus dumbbells. You see the strong men always vaulting around overhead. <laughs> oh, very impressive. Come to the stinkiest circus in town. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, Junji Ito is fucking ridiculous. Um, Uzumaki's less ridiculous. It's a little more grounded, but that being said, uh, crazy shit happens. Real fucking crazy shit. <laughs> hmm. There is a fish called a crappy? Really? Huh. Oh. Getting into, into obscure, obscure fish facts over here. It just spelt like carp, but crap. Crap, crappy? I don't know. See, I'm looking up. I'm looking go. up a crappy now. Hope it's not bad. Yeah, crappies. Oh. Welcome to the fish stream. We got crappies. Oh, wow. Hmm. Cro crappie. Crappie? I don't know how to pronounce. Whenever I see fucking these things. Crappie. Yeah, whenever I see these, like, how to pronounce things, I'm just like, who knows this? <laughs> no one can I'm read like, this. Well, I'm like, well, it's not a long O, so it's not crappie. So crappie. it's got to be crappy. I see the A-E and I just go, hey. I don't know Aye. if that's correct, but. <laughs> <laughs> there it's was. It's creepy. <laughs> it's creepy. There was a um, another adaptation that no one ever talks about, but it's my favorite adaptation of Junji Ito, and it's the Uzumaki movie from like what was it, two thousand? It's a live action movie, and oh. it is like a as much as you could make a movie feel like a cartoon or a manga. It does that because like there's like really it like uses CG in weird ways. Like sometimes when someone screams, like they will CG their eyes to be bigger and weirder and stuff like <laughs> that. It's a very unhinged movie. I fucking love it. It's so cool. Uh, it remi that reminds me, um, it just as a quick reference or an aside, um, something else like movies doing weird things to tie into almost anime, not anime, but just like weird illustrated style things you know creep show like the older horror movie oh yeah how it did a lot of things with like uh really stilting the camera and also using these really sharp wild colors to contrast things mm. little things like that it was like was trying to be like comic booky right yeah was, like, like the, feeling like a tales from the crypt thing the, the gimmick was like it was like based off a of comic is that the one that has mm -hmm. um stephen king turning into a plant in it yeah, yeah. And it's got Leslie Nielsen as well. Oh my god, I forgot about that. I didn't know that was uh, Stephen King until I watched a Red Letter Media thing recently, and I was like, "Fuck!" I didn't know that was him. <laughs> I fell off of Red Letter Media. I should I should get back in there. I did to the reviews. I've been kind of keeping up with those are those always pull me in because it's like, "Ooh, Rocketeer" or something like that. Because I always loved the the wheel of the worst things that they did. Mm -hmm. That was something I, I, I uh, pitched for Giant Bomb was to do like a Wheel of the Worst with video games. Ooh. Just, like <laughs> play it for not even the whole thing, just like kind of touch on it because there's so much like fucking Kusoge out there, just really bad games. Oh, um, yeah. And that kind of didn't get picked up, but then Blight Club did, which is like very adjacent. So I don't know, whatever. <laughs> Oh, if you ever want to leverage it into a stream and you yeah. ever go over to stream elements, there are pre-made wheel things. Right? Like, come on. Like, it's right there. <laughs> Just slap it on in there and spin it and there you go. Mm -hmm. No problem. Easy peasy. Yeah, I didn't know if like RLM, like, I think I stopped watching them because they were like being weird about woke stuff and i was just like i don't yeah, have the energy it, like there were definitely times where i was kind of like just move on guys <laughs> like they were talking about sjw's and calling them sensitive joss swedens and i'm just like is this like 
what am I supposed to do with this? Do I need to expend the energy on this? And I just kind of stopped watching for a while because I was like, yeah. yeah. I definitely agree. It was t there were some okay. points where it's kind of like, uh, it feels like I'm fighting myself to keep watching this episode, and it kept happening on some. <laughs> and I had to, uh, I had to watch. I think the most, like, not recent, but the last time I had, I was watching something from Red Letter Media. It was when I was making the Firewatch uh, hot takeout, and I needed examples of people being like, it's not a game! <laughs> and fucking Rich <laughs> Evans. <laughs> <laughs> like, not a game! Like, just throwing a fucking fit. It's like, oh my god, bro. <laughs> Calm it down. <laughs> so did this, um, did this use a lot of practical effects here on this movie? I guess it was early 2000s. Oh yeah, yeah. like... Fucking, by the way, this movie's green as hell. Like, this, yeah, like, yeah, it has that like early aughts, like the Matrix just happened. So everyone was like, oh, You can make movies green? Oh, I, shit. I, <laughs> I very recently started dipping my toes for some reason into common rider seasons, and mm -hmm. I just jumped to one from like 03. And it has kind of just not green, but it just has like a bit of a wash to the colors. I'm like, oh yeah, this is early thousands. Yep. <laughs> just something about it. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, the early aughts have like a definite like green or blue wash on everything. And mm -hmm. this one is like about as green as the Matrix. It's super duper green at all times. Uh, it's, that, it's that period where you look at it and you're like, oh, that's an older movie. Then you see it's widescreen. You're like, wait. <laughs> yeah, minute. Oh yeah, I forgot there was a... Um, an adaptation of Long Dream from Ito. That's a fucked up mm. one. Gia, Long Dream. Look that one up. That mm. one's good. That one's fucking good. Long Dream. Don't look up, like, the pa the panel. Because, okay, something that's cool about Jinji Ito is that, like, when you're reading it in a physical book, they're, you know, he has mastered the art of, like, the jump scare page turn. Mm. So, like... You'll be reading, 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 and, and it's just like, okay, like something's ramping up, like the tension's high, and then you'll turn the page and you will physically be like, Jit, like, it's just the biggest, ugliest, scariest fucking drawing that you've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And the long dream has like one of like, I think the scariest like page turn, holy fuck, what the goddamn Christ is that sort of uh, moment. And it's just like, you can do this with a comic book? Like, that's insane. <laughs> Have you have you um, have you seen many of the adaptations to film or I, I, I'd still I'd still be going with the manga, but I'm just curious because I like I've, I said, I didn't have I didn't have a, an idea of the scope of his work other than he's been doing stuff for a bit. Yeah, I've only uh, I've only seen Uzumaki and, and I didn't I forgot. I think I knew in the back of my head that there was an adaptation of Long Dream. But. And that was when was this? It says it's 2000 here, 2000. but it says it says Spiral was 2000. Um, now I'm looking this up. But yeah, I've only spiral. seen Uzumaki. Hmm. Oh no, yeah, my, Spiral's the one my, with the spiral eye I keep seeing stuff about. It was maybe. an eye, right? Or is it a head? I can't remember which. It all runs together. Ooh. Uh, yeah, 2000. Man, that's a 2000 also. How did I? How did I see one of these, and not the other one? And they both came out in 2000. That's weird. Oh, director, uh, writer, just a single name. Huh. Higuchinsky. It's a weird name. Interesting. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, Uzumaki is the is the one where the um, eyeball that's kind of like spiraling into a big hole in some a woman's head. Yeah. That's oh, her. Uzumaki is spiral. Oh. Yes, sorry. Uzumaki means spiral. <laughs> <laughs> Translator's note. <laughs> sorry. Translator's note. Keikaku means plan. Got it. <laughs> but yeah, they did a lot of like practical effects and like uh, they're pretty mm -hmm. goofy because it was like the year 2000 and this is clearly like a bit of a budget movie. If you're um, mentioning CG to accentuate some eye stuff mm -hmm. or features in the early aughts, I'm kind of... I'm a little curious how bad it looks. <laughs> oh man. Not enough uh, to watch it, but it's but when you describe the era in CG, it's just like, ooh, that's not gonna hold up. I think it showed that off in the uh the trailer. If I'm not terribly mistaken. Let's see if I get content grabbed on this.
Yeah, it's a pretty crazy movie. <laughs> uh, oh. They don't show yep. it. I definitely may have seen a squirrel or two. <laughs> I remember the scene that it's in, too, but I don't think they're going to show it because there's another and another eyeball moment where this guy's eyes like very cartoonishly go different directions like a spiral Ooh, freaky and it's like really adorably bad cg <laughs> oh yeah here here's the moment that this woman's eyes get like warped just a bit and it's in a really like oh. sudden like they really suddenly cut Ooh. to this woman who's screaming at something she's seeing up in the sky and like while she's screaming they just kind of warp her eyes like up and back to normal, like pretty quickly, just enough for you to be like, Ugh, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> like Holy that jump scare scared. Crap, that looks weird. <laughs> it scared the shit out of me as a kid. Like I was like, what, 13 when I saw this movie? <laughs> I still hold it pretty fucking dear. Look at this fashion icon. Oh, you're not gonna be able to see it. It's so small. Yeah. Spirals take over a town, Geop. It's crazy. <laughs> Are you muted again? Look at those stiff hair follicles. Boy. <laughs> I forgot I was on push to talk for a second. Ah, oh, dang. I said I said a great joke and everybody missed it. Don't oh, worry man. about it. Oh, man. Too bad. <laughs> the film is shot in green tinted. No. The film is shot in green tinted. <laughs> Wow. That's the fandom mark of quality, everybody. <laughs> you know them, you love them. There are some scenes in the film digitally twisted. Hmm. <laughs> uh huh. Oh, Six the movie and was... nine and nearly spiral numbers. Nice. Can be seen on several occasions. Nice. The sexiest spiral numbers. I did wow. not know that the movie was filmed before the manga was done. Um, oh, but yeah, the manga ends that's... differently. Huh. I thought it was a budget reason because the end of the manga is fucking wild and would be like such a CG heavy moment that how, I was how like, How long of a run was, was Uzumaki? Did, was there like a break? Like, like he did it in bits and pieces or was, cause that's, that's kind of jarring actually. One hour, 30 minutes, apparently. Um, no. <laughs> Manga. Uh, it was a, a weekly serial from 1998 to 99. Wow. They so, yeah. hit the ground running to get that movie out the gate, huh? <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, it's a cool-ass thing. Definitely wreck it. Uh, the other uh, now, Jason, anime. The, Jason, the thing that's kind of throwing me off here is, is if it's just three three volumes, even with his reputation, they were just kind of like, oh, he's making a multi-volume thing? Let's make it into a movie. <laughs> and, mm. I mean, by that point, he was like already pretty renowned for Tomie. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah, he did a really good adaptation of Frankenstein that is like pretty faithful to the book like more faithful to the book than like a lot of frankenstein movies are and stuff like that it was really good um he also adapted a non-horror um kind of like a social horror i guess also my burger was back to being like mm -hmm. scared because i typed something um he adapted no longer human which is um a really really famous novel um by this really fucked up guy uh, about, <laughs> about his fucked up life um, about how he like he's basically like it's interesting novel by this really <laughs> fucked up dude <laughs> that's basically the point though like, it's really it's so fucked up it's so sad it's such a it's just like really fucked up shit happened to this author and then he wrote a book about a lot of like and it's semi autobiographical this book and like Right before this book came out, the author uh, unfortunately uh, committed suicide. Uh, mm -hmm. And this was like, this book was considered like kind of like his, his confession to like how fucked up his life was and why he was so like, you know, depressed and messed up and all that stuff. But it was like a mm -hmm. really, really haunting, you know, adaptation because, you know, it's weird to see Junji Ito doing real 
stories and not like ghosts and, and crazy crap and <laughs> you know but there's also there's something that was mentioned here i didn't know he had he lended work to death stranding huh yeah did he that's what's said there i was like oh i didn't beat the game but i was just trying to think of hmm oh their likenesses oh mm -hmm. oh okay who was was he yeah, a random he, person that was he like was he living next door to Conan O'Brien? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's one of the NPCs. I mean, there was like a rumor going around that um, you know, and it was like a fairly I don't know how real this rumor was. I like to believe. I want to believe. Um, but there was a rumor going around that Ito was like directly um involved in PT. Um, because like the way Lisa looks like has some vibes uh, Junji Ito vibes to it and then even like some of the early trailers for Death Stranding had like some designs that people were like is that like a is that a Junji Ito type thing there was also like the um oh this one preview that had the model of Chico in it it's like a really rare hard to find preview thing but like that had some Junji Ito ass stuff in it so people were like is Junji Ito actually involved and we don't know but their faces are fucking in Death Stranding, so that wouldn't be the craziest thing if they were like doing some some uh, concept art stuff or something. So I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, what's the name of that the guy who did that book that I was just talking about? No longer human. No longer human. Osamu Dazai wrote it. Oh. Yeah, tragic life, horrible life. Uh, and he became a bit of a scumbag <laughs> because he had such a horrible life. I feel like I've heard the name before, but it wouldn't have been from this, so I'm confused, but he's, well, must just been a similar name. It could be. I don't know. Are you thinking of Umez? Kazuo Umezu? This fucking guy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ooh. Hey. This fucking guy. I He's here to party. He wow. is always here to party. He wears this striped shirt. It's like his, like... It's his, his Waldo shirt. Yeah, it's like his his thing. He wears this shirt. Like, I don't know why. He's a weird weird little guy. Um, <laughs> there he is. Uh, he's 86. He's still wow. making stuff, I think. But yeah, if you've ever seen see. um, Floating Classroom, that was him. Very famous work. Drifting classroom. Oh, um, didn't Minovsky article on Twitter post some stuff from him at some point? I think he did. Oh, almost maybe where I saw it. Almost certainly. I think that's where I saw some stuff from there, possibly. But yeah, his style is just like a lot of people screaming, <laughs> a lot of children screaming. Oh <gasps> yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I remember seeing some from this because I was like, I'd see the style and I'd be like, oh, this is quainter, older manga style. And then you see mm -hmm. this imagery in here, it's like, oh. Jesus. I didn't know they did this back then. <laughs> yeah, and like he was one of the one of the firsts, like the the grandfathers of like you know manga horror. Mm -hmm. But a uh, huge influence on Jinji Ito, and you can like see it in like the line work. I think. Yeah, like that. Uh, what is it? Is that top center? It's it's the one that has those kids leaning down. I was like, what is that? What is that a ground? I'm just looking on the capture. I'm sorry, I can't describe it. It's yeah, it's that one. Yeah. It's like I just saw a bit of that, and I was like, "What the hell?" So, in the manga, um, huh. the manga's really fucking crazy. So, like, the point. The, no, the whole, I couldn't tell. <laughs> the plot of this is like uh, an elementary school just gets zoiped to a different dimension, and it's a really bad dimension with fucked up shit. In <laughs> not it. one of the, not one of the not, sunshine and gumdrop ones. Not one of the good ones. Um, <laughs> but it's actually it's actually Earth like an eon from now, like thousands of years from now, and like everyone they know is dead. Their parents are dead. Everyone's dead, and like eventually all the adults go insane or fucked up, and like the kids have to take over. And it's like this Lord of the Flies shit, and like. Bad things are happening constantly to these little kids. It is so fucking crazy. And it's like, they let someone draw this? Like, they didn't, like, <laughs> they didn't, like, arrest this man for doing this fucked up shit? Because it's like, th these, like, goofy looking critters in the back here, those are, like, 
evolved humans. Like those are the last vestiges of humanity or something like that. Oh. And they like start taking over the kids and like evolving them into them. So some of these are the kids. Oh, ridiculous. So much bad Ooh. shit. There's no food. They have no fucking food. Like it's, <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> oh, the chair page. Yo, fucking crazy. There's like a fucked up monster that, that senses fear. Oh. Not to say the same thing again, but the PNG is doing a lot of good work on selling this. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Man, okay. I forgot how much fucked up bad shit happens to these kids. Look how scared these fucking kids are. Yeah, the, 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 that picture right there where the dude is like holding that kid, was that at gunpoint? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kids get held That was the one that I saw yeah. in passing. Oh. <laughs> Those faces. <laughs> oh, yeah. There you go. He's stabbing the kid. Oh, stabbed him. Stabbing God. this child like a seven-year-old. Good oh, God. Man. It is like such a like absurdly bleak horror manga. And you know what? It all works out in the end, though. Don't worry. <laughs> Things actually work out in the end, believe it or not. <laughs> After hundreds of children die. Hundreds. <laughs> My God! Just awful. how big was this classroom? It was it was like a whole school. Like it was like grades like uh, kindergarten to like tenth grade or something. Mm -hmm. I forget how how big uh, like how many grades Japanese grade school has before you're in high school officially. But it was like the entire school, so it was probably like five hundred students or something. I don't know, but oh. Yeah, unbelievable levels of dread. That's that's the way to put it. <laughs> I don't know why. Maybe it's a weird coping mechanism, but looking at this, my brain just snapped over to... Uh, have you ever seen, like, a Kagi or Kaiji? Oh, man, we were watching Kaiji recently, actually. <laughs> my brain just snapped over to, to uh, Kurosawa, which is one of his mangas, and that is... That's very good. If you ever get the itch to just... To just go through this this guy's work, because like, oh, yeah. uh, how are you liking it so far, by the way? So Kaiji is, we keep on like falling off it, then getting back on. Like we, we mm -hmm. keep forgetting we're watching it kind of. And then it's like, oh, right. Let's go back to Kaiji because it's really stressful. <laughs> oh, yeah. Season one. Oh, my God. All that rock, paper, scissors bullshit. Like, yeah. oh, my God. I was Season like, two confused. is fantastic, <laughs> but I felt like season one was so... I hadn't think I can't think of something I've seen before that made that was that stressful. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! And it was like uh, I think uh, I read this somewhere, or Chip told me that like the the stars that they are betting are like that was where Yu Gi Oh got the the stars that they use in their competition, and why a big chunk of Yu Gi Oh took place on a boat as well. <laughs> it's like fuck, here it all is, the genesis of the star system. Uh, yeah, really complicated rock, paper, scissors. Um, but yeah, we are in, I guess, season two. Because he's off the boat. Um, and uh, he's on a very narrow uh, beam that they definitely stole um, that idea for Squid Game. <laughs> Kurosawa is another one of his arts or one of his works. And it's kind of, uh, I wouldn't say stressful, but it is, it is wild. Like there is an entire story arc that deals with the main character who's like in his mid forties, he's a construction worker and he ha he's building up the courage to go and fight a bunch of middle schoolers. Oh no. And he beats them up. And then the biggest, strongest middle schooler in the entire <laughs> area shows up and challenges him to a fight. And this oh kid God. is like, uh, he, he, he's a monster. So it's just, it is so wild. <laughs> oh my God. I, I love his, his art style is really weird. I like how it this is, is so like, strange. like clearly this is like not Kaiji, but it still kind of feels like Kaiji adjacent mm -hmm. because the, uh, the expressions are so similar. Yeah. The char yeah. there are some characters that feel like their faces are kind of borrowed from others, but it's kind of like, well, whatever it's his design. <laughs> it's his style, man. Yeah, I always think of like, uh, oh gosh, what is it? Oh, Os Osamu Tezuka, who had like a, 
a handful of faces and character designs he liked using. So you'd get a random story of Blackjack and you'd have a very distinctive antagonist. A few chapters <laughs> later, you see the exact same person. It's like, no, this is someone else. Blackjack. Like, what? <laughs> Wasn't there, um, isn't there a place in Japan that's like, ah, uh, how do I describe this? Basically, you can go there. It's like a tourist spot and it's like the flop house that a whole bunch of mangaka like got started in when they were like super poor and like living together. And you can like visit these mm -hmm. like ancient ass, like basically like bachelor hovel that they lived in. Oh. <laughs> Just like no air conditioning, no heating, like very, <laughs> very sad times. <laughs> I think I remember I remember that being brought up at some point. I could not tell you what the name of it is though, yeah. but yeah. Meanwhile, I'm obsessed with JoJo's. Um <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Are done you with Stone the Ocean manga yet. Or something, or? No, we're watching Stone Ocean. I'm not mm -hmm. caught up with uh where Chip I'm is. super far behind on the anime. Oh man, where are you at? Um. Oh, what's his name? The one with the pompadour. Josuke. Yes, Josuke. I was. I need to pick it back up. I was really enjoying that though. So I got the Morio I got to arc. the final arc of it, maybe with the dude with all the hands and stuff. Yes, Kira. Yeah, and I think he. I think he swapped faces or mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. That was about where I left yeah, off. Yeah, he fucking did. Were you were you reading the manga or the watching the anime? Uh, just the anime. Oh, it's so good. I've heard the season after that is kind of a hard sell. Like maybe the the, the protagonist's powers yeah. aren't as interesting or something. Um, so like, yeah, the Morio arc is is just really good. Like a ton of likable characters. Like how precious mm -hmm. is Okuyasu? Like love him forever. Um, and like it's a mystery, you know. And like I think that's like just really good in general. And people's powers are very like well defined. And then yeah, we do the uh, the next one after that. Is, I think is Golden Wind, which um, for some reason Japan really loves Golden Wind. So I was like, oh. I was kind of hyped for it. Like, oh, this is the one that Japan really likes. I don't know where I heard that. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, but I think it's just because Japan likes Italy. Um, <laughs> oh, it's exotic. Ooh, Italy, amazing. Oh, by the way, uh, Cuttlefish said the house you were talking about with the mangaka is called Tokiwa, so they have a link to oh. it there. Yep, yep, it's just this crappy apartment building <laughs> where a ton of manga <laughs> Greedy <comes> recreation. <laughs> <laughs> what? Did it burn what? down? Can I, like, rotate this? What's up? <laughs> Survived the fire bombings of World War II. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Oh, yeah, wow. This is a high-res... <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Version of this hovel where all the bachelor models Look at them live. textures. Ooh, yeah. Wow. So clean you can eat off it. Mm, Please it's like, don't. It's like Forspoken in here. These textures are so smooth. <laughs> um. <laughs> Look at that overhang awning. That looks great. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> tiles. Love tiles. <laughs> I will keep this in mind. Maybe I'll visit it. Oh, yeah. Look at this. This is where everyone lived and worked. Oh, my God. What? Is that what it looks like nowadays, that last picture? I don't know. I mean, like, this was the layout, though. Ooh. The little t teeny tiny uh, five to t four and a half tatami mat rooms. <laughs> 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 you ever seen a uh, tatami galaxy, by the way? Uh, no, oh. I've been told I should. Absolutely. Fucking. I think Yokai in particular mm. said I need to watch that. Mmm. Mmm, that's a good fucking, that's a good fucking thing. I, I will warn you that the first like episode and a half is a breakneck pace and you just have to let it wash over you it'll it'll <laughs> the context will come a bit later but you just kind of have to buckle the fuck up i gotcha man hmm. where is this maybe i'll visit it's it. all it's on my to watch list that i'm very bad about getting back to <laughs> it's in tokyo so you were saying that um so golden winds you didn't enjoy oh, it then i didn't yeah i wasn't really into golden wind either um Cause like it's uh yeah, the powers are a lot more vague. Um Do they just do like Calvin Ball moves at times? Yo, they Calvin Ball a lot in that one, and like that's saying a lot because a lot of 
Araki's plots are Calvin Ball to begin with. Yeah, um, like the uh, the whole Hamon thing. It's like, actually. <laughs> we're going to shift the goalposts on this like over and over again until it resembles basically you have a ghost who's your friend uh, and fights for you. Um, you know, so he drops plot threads all the time and like changes shit constantly already, which which is like, you know, I'm used to it. But even f for someone who's used to it, like Golden Wind was like, who is doing what? What does this power do again? Oh, it's changing <laughs> again. Like in the first episode, Jorno, fucking who's the new Jojo, he uses his power to, um, Oh God, what did he do? He like threw a frog at someone's head and then like... The <laughs> he just thrung that out there. He throws remember. a frog. It, and... had, it had to do with a frog and like, I don't know. But he never, ever, ever uses that power again to like spontaneously, like, I don't, I don't remember. Was like, there more to it or did he just pull out a frog and throw it at someone? <laughs> there's, there's definitely more to it. He can influence uh, life. That's how vague it is. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Like, that's... He, okay, that's a <sighs> bit of a wide net. <laughs> so, like, for example, he can, like, make a tree grow and, like, use it to, like, an elevator to ride somewhere. He, like, never does this again. Like, he never, like, <laughs> fast forwards the growth of a, of a plant ever again. And it's like, that sounds useful, as far as I remember. Oh, yes, he made a frog that took a shovel hit for him and reflected the damage back onto the guy who tried to hit him with a shovel. What happened to the frog, though? Frog was fine. Oh, okay. I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the frog, once again, the Hamon thing. I think about when the Zapelli punches the shit out of that fucking frog. It's just fine. He's fine. He's, <laughs> I don't know what Araki has against frogs and, and putting them in peril, but then being like, never mind, the frog's cool. Um, hates dogs, though. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah the dogs, no rules apply to them. They will not be safe. No. Um, yeah, the frog was fine and was also a suitcase. Right. I knew there was a suitcase oh. involved with this. Um, turning a, a creature turning into a suitcase doesn't sound like it worked out well for them. I don't think, <laughs> <yet>. <laughs> or he turned the suitcase into a frog. Oh. And then it just it became a frog. I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember. Uh, it's complicated. You know, like every other JoJo, I can be like, oh, this is what their their stand does. Like. Jorno, I do not understand. And what makes it even worse is that the antagonist times that by 20. If you don't understand the protagonist's powers, you will never understand the antagonist's powers because the shit that fucking King Crimson does, <laughs> I don't know what it, he, he deletes time? Uh. Maybe? So it's not, it's, it's not freezing time like the world? No, no. See, the world is, is makes sense. The world is fine. You can freeze time and fuck with people and move them back down staircases and make you think you're really powerful or really just <laughs> fucking with them. But uh, King you know, Crimson... I, I, that just reminded me of that whole scene where he does that. Does he do that to, does he do that to Paul Nareff? Yeah, Paul Nareff, he fucking... I just kind of like to think about how that was happening in real time for Dio. He just walks down there, gingerly picks him up, puts him oh three steps further down, I've seen, and goes like, back. I've seen cosplayers do that, and it's, like, so fucking funny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but apparently, like, King Crimson is not as confusing if, like, it's translated right, but I still don't understand but it's it's like he he can see into the future but he eliminates can, the cause of an action yeah he eliminates yeah he eliminates the cause of an action but keeps the effect but gosh that sounds so strange i don't understand it though not in a good mysterious <laughs> way that just sounds strange i don't understand <laughs> it um yeah it's it's really confusing um in general but it, Stone Ocean, are you clicking better with that? Stone or? Ocean makes sense. Yes, I love Stone Ocean. Mm -hmm. Everyone in it fucking rules. Um, no, no duds. Every episode is ridiculous <laughs> and uh, incredible. And like some of the stands are like, like so. So Golden Wind has a lot of body horror in it that I didn't expect. Like I was, I thought I was cool with body horror until I saw what Araki does with body horror, and now I'm like, I don't think I like body horror anymore. <laughs> I was wrong. Um, lots of fingernail stuff, and <sighs> oh, I think I've seen clips of that. Yeah, that is. Mm. Mm, uh, so yeah, okay. wasn't really into that. Um, 
but the body horror stuff that happens in um, Stone Ocean is a lot more I can deal with it. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not as constant either. Um, and just the plot. I, the plot I, I is saw better. the I saw the first episode maybe, and some of the things that bother me are little things like uh, strings mm -hmm. coming off of Jolene. I vaguely remember. Yep. I can't remember the context, but it was enough to make me go. Ah. <laughs> She can like shoot them out of like her fingertips. They don't come out of her fingernails, I don't think. Okay, because just looking at that was just like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, she just kind of like, pew, like a little, like a little gun, like, and hmm. string comes okay. out, magic string that can like block bullets and make nets, and like it's surprisingly, like versatile. Because like once you, when you hear like, oh, her powers, she's made a string. It's like what? That sucks. That's a sh sucky power. <laughs> What are you going to do with that? Uh, but it's pretty versatile, and uh, all of her friends are really fucking cool. Um, no spoilers. All her friends are fucking cool. So did that? Did they wrap up the uh, ha -ha. all of Jolene stuff? Haha. -ha. Okay, I thought I thought she had a longer part. Did they just condense it down a lot? I guess. Um. No, I mean like. Because I know Steel Ball Run goes for a very long time. I think. I don't know anything about Steel Ball Run, except I've seen some of the characters from it, and they look even more gay than usual. Um, yeah, the uh, the JoJo in that, I was like, oh, wow, people are going to like him. Certain Howdy. people will. <laughs> Howdy, Sailor and Friends. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, no, boy. my clothes are far too small for me. <laughs> the recurring JoJo problem. Oh, man. Um, but no, I don't know. The, I guess like the plot of... Um, Stone Ocean is just like a little more like contained, I guess. I don't really know what the plot is of Steel Ball Run, um, but it's much more of like a bottle show in a similar way that like the Morio arc is like, it's just taking place in this town. We're not jet setting. Oh, really? We're not going all sorts of places. Um, and like, you know, Jorno's whole arc in um, Golden Wind is like this big, like we're running from the mob situation so they are running all over uh different uh places in italy to escape slash kill the bad guy and stuff like that mm -hmm. um but yeah stone ocean is is um jojo is in jail jolene is in jail and <laughs> she has to figure out how to beat the bad guy and find out who the bad guy even is first of all mm -hmm. uh from jail and uh, save her dad, who has had something bad happen to him <laughs> in a really bad Part way. Part six is the Florida arc. I forgot Florida it was arc. in Florida. It's all in Florida. <laughs> it's so funny, too, because, like, all the geography is, like, super wrong, and it's super duper funny. Like, Do you remember, like, a one-off case out of curiosity? God, it was, like, it was saying that, like, Orlando was, like, super fucking far away. <laughs> it's, so like, it's like a 20-hour drive. Uh, yeah, it's, it's something crazy. Uh, geography, I don't know. How do I, how do I find this example? JJBA. <laughs> Orlando to Cape Canaveral. 10 hours by car. 10 hours by oh. car to Cape Canaveral. Hmm. Let's actually... Well, I'm not going to look it up because I don't want to dox myself on Google Maps. Uh, so I won't. You Google mm -hmm. how far away an actual drive from Orlando to Cape Canaveral is. I, I don't think it's that. I'm gonna look it up on my phone so you don't get to see it. Feels like a 10 year drive. <laughs> <laughs> 50 minutes. Ooh, boy. Maybe they maybe they interpret it as walking. Yeah, I don't maybe know. if you're walking, it's a 10 hour drive. Yeah, it's an hour and 12 minutes, no tolls. <laughs> 50 minutes and it's, and, it's, and it's four bucks in tolls. But yeah, it is not that far away. Um. <laughs> Amazing. Mm -hmm. And I just love that this Jojo is a Floridian. That's so weird. I'm actually I'm actually gonna be kind of curious if they do they explain why they went up in Florida or just that's where Jolene went, that's I guess. That's just uh that's just how the um because I know, know the, that the, uh, the lineage ended up in that direction, you know, like I, I know that Araki likes picking set pieces at times just from traveling and stuff, mm -hmm. but yeah, I like guess um, I really like Florida. <laughs> I mean, sure. I think it's like, you know, like the original, like Jonathan Joestar was British. So was Joseph. Mm -hmm. But Joseph ended up in New York, you know, just from like how how people migrate throughout the years. So at some point, uh, 
Jotaro fucked around uh, in Florida and spawned a kid, <laughs> I guess. Marine biologist. A marine oh, biologist? Yeah. Jotaro Him? was yeah, Jotaro was probably doing marine biology shit in Florida, and that's where he met some some nice lady. Yeah. I guess I could see him being really stoked about dolphins. He loves dolphins. <laughs> oh my god. I I I adore that Jotaro, the the meanest punkest child, becomes a, a marine biologist. A doctor? <laughs> A doctor of marine biology. He loves wow. the fish. And he was a delinquent. He Man. Was a, a delinquent who went on a, an Indiana Jones-ass quest to kill a vampire in Egypt and ended up being <laughs> a marine biologist in Florida. Uh, fish nerd. <laughs> it's funny because like he never expressed any interest in fish or anything like that during the Stardust Crusaders. <laughs> I was going back in my memory. I'm like... They were on a boat at one point. Yeah. I remember there was a giant ape. That they're, was about it. They were in a submarine, too, at one point during that. What? Yeah, it was a submarine part. In that same in that same episode or a different one? No, different episode of the same arc. But Ooh. yeah, once they were in Egypt, I forget why they boarded a submarine. They, I guess they thought it was safe from stands, idiots. Now you're underwater and a stand is attacking you, dumbass. Hmm. Uh, yeah, High Priestess, yeah. Yeah, the, hey, we've got to go to Egypt arc was so strange. I like the Monster of the Week uh, oh. format in general, <laughs> but in that case, it was like, Jesus Christ, get on with it. It seemed like they took a step. They they uh. they pull into a gas station. They trip over across, like, the only stand user within, like, the next 500 miles or some shit. Well, like, stand oh, users are drawn to each other. I was in here getting other. a drink. <laughs> This monkey has a stand. Oh my god. I was trying to think of other animals that have stands. Uh, so there's the monkey. There is Iggy, the dog. He's got a stand. Um, and a face. What a face. Oh god, what a face. A cat. <laughs> cat gets a stand. Well, it's not really a cat. It's a plant that's also a cat. In the Morio arc. Which you probably didn't get to, but it's a good, it's a good little guy. <laughs> I might have. I'm very fuzzy on where I dropped off. The rats. There's a rat with a, a stand? Rat. rat stand? Oh, is that the one that was like, that had a sniper stand? Is that a thing that happened? <laughs> part, part four, rat. <laughs> I remember, I remember Jotaro getting shrunk at one point. Did that happen? Did he get, honey, I shrunk the kids? Honey, I, shrunk, I... The, I shrunk the Jojo. <laughs> that had to happen, right? Does he get shrunk? Rat, rat with, with a rifle. rifle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jojos shrink all the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it happens to a lot of Jojos. <laughs> Jojos are as large as the scene necessitates. Okay, it's the fist the North Star rules. Man, fucking are they ten feet tall or five feet tall? I don't fucking know. The Jojo of of Stone Ocean gets shrunk at one point too. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. You know it's bullshit. Okay, someone mentioned uh, de aging the de aging plot from the the. Horrible pedophile episode of of. <laughs> oh Stardust yeah. Why'd they have to give Ooh. the coolest power to the grossest character possible? Oh God, that whole mm. the premise is so good. Why did they go that direction? Iraqi, please fucking don't. But something that pisses me off to no end, and I will never ever forgive Iraqi for this. Everyone got young and baby, and they didn't de-age Joseph. <laughs> That would have been interesting. <laughs> he could have been the one to like beat the shit out of the pedophile with Hamon, like classic Hamon when he from when he was young. I was really hoping for him at some point. I mean, it seemed like most of the time he was there just for the ride. He was there. And I was to go, really hoping. Oh no! <laughs> I was really hoping he'd have like a few more episodes where he kind of saved the day, but it seemed like it only happened once. He was maybe? there for comic relief, and he had that yeah. one episode where he saved his own ass from mm -hmm. that growth on his arm that was really mean to him. <laughs> oh, I remember that now. Okay, I was yeah. sitting there. I was like, did he have to get something lanced? The one. No. <laughs> Someone oh. bit him. I don't know. It was kind of weird. <laughs> Old Joseph hey, is Doc, just there. Have you ever there, seen this before? Just there to say, oh no. And Polnareff is just there to to, to be scared of all toilets and have bad things God, happen God, I to couldn't him. stand Polnareff. I just, I couldn't. 
I, Every part has a yeah. character that I'm iffy about. <laughs> Paul Nerf is hands down one of the worst, uh, though, honestly. I, he grew on me over time, but I do wish there was just, like, less focus on horrific bathrooms in that. <laughs> 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 I just don't like f anything to focus on scary bathrooms. I just don't need that in my life, generally speaking. But it was Rocky just like... Rocky was going through some stuff, okay? <laughs> every other episode, it was just like, get a load of how these people shit. It's like, I don't... Uh, <laughs> man, I don't, I don't want to know. I don't care. Please stop. <laughs> there was like the, the fucking... When, when he was uh, the... Was it the Empress? And Whole Horse in that hotel when when he was getting his tongue was getting puppeteered to lick a toilet and he got really close to accidentally to, to licking a fucking toilet i was just like what is iraqi doing with these bathrooms please stop it is weird how much of this stuff i memory hold and as soon as you start describing it it snaps back out I'm like oh yeah What's the tongue puppeteering part tongue puppeteering know? something that's wild is that like uh we only started watching jojo's bizarre adventure me and, and josh because um, Tomato Grandpa, we were hanging out with Tomato Grandpa. This was like the first time ever that we met him. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was a random like, hey, we're going to Wisconsin to go to House on the Rock. Do you want us to pick you up and we'll all go to House on the Rock? And it's like, okay, internet stranger, let's just go on this long ass road trip with you. <laughs> so we went to Wisconsin and went to House on the Rock, which is a bizarre place. I recommend if you go to Wisconsin, go to this place. If you have to be in Wisconsin for some reason, this is the best thing in Wisconsin is House on the Rock, which is just a wild ass mansion. Wait, G-Up, do you know about House on the Rock? Never heard of it. You are the Zillow streamer and you don't know about House on the Rock. <gasps> Never heard of it, ever, ever. My man. If you ever, if you ever want to quit doing these streams and you need a finale, this is the house you end on. <laughs> because... Hmm. It was basically made by a weird a weird artist who hated Frank Lloyd Wright. And he was like, I'm going to make my own fucking dumb house. God, we've had so many Frank Lloyd Wright houses right? recently. Yeah, so you're going to love There have been a lot of them. But yeah, the guy that made this was like building his own weird house somewhere. Uh, you know, being bitter about not being Frank Lloyd Wright and Frank Lloyd Wright getting all the cool jobs or something like that. And people kept bugging him while he was building the house. And they were like, what are you building? And he's like, a house. And they're like, can I see it? And he's like, no. <laughs> And, fuck out of here and, and then people were like we'll pay you to see your fucked up house and he was like oh you'll pay me to see my fucked up house oh you'll pay me to see my fucked up house so he made it more fucked up and stupid on purpose um and basically he kind of ran in the same circles as like warhol and all those famous like weirdo artists of like the mm -hmm. the 60s and 70s and stuff like that so like this house was like only semi-functional as a place you could live in because it's so bizarre and there's so many like obvious like you know cocaine dens in it like, that you can peek in and look at but it is a gigantic gigantic house there's three different houses in this house you buy a ticket to each house or get the full house pass to all wait, of them wait three separate houses is this like a turducken situation <laughs> it kind of is um it's huh. also a situation where he um, he made it a sideshow situation, basically, and he started collecting all sorts of weird things. He claimed to have the largest collection of armor, the largest collection of dolls, the largest collection of Tiffany lamps and stuff like that. Um, and eventually somebody tattled on him to the Better Business Bureau and was like, hey, you can't label these things as legit Tiffany lamps. They fucking aren't. Um <laughs> <laughs> and he just he just started getting them commissioned by some guy whose last name was Tiffany or something like that and still called them Tiffany lamps. Um, <laughs> but there's like dog armor in this house. There's no such thing as dog armor. It's in his house. There's a collection. I kind of want to see that. Now. It's insane. It's insane. <laughs> there's a collection of guns of all sorts and sizes, including one that's just uh, how many chamber you know you know on a revolver the little chain where it's got the six chambers what are those called mm -hmm. the actual cylinder or something yeah they're just cylinders yeah um there was a gun in there that had six or nine cylinders on a gun uh there was a gun that was also a fork i might have seen a picture of that out of context at some point uh they have the, there's a knife gun there's a fork gun there's a spoon gun there is a recreation of an early 19th century street in this house. There is the world's largest indoor carousel in this house. Is the carousel also a gun? No, that's a shame. Missed opportunity. 
Uh, if you watched American Gods, uh, that was filmed at House on the Rock in places because that's like a place of fucking power or something. I don't know. There is a scale model of a killer whale or something like that, or a humpback whale in this house. And it's longer than the Statue of Liberty is tall. And it's oh. fighting a kraken. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And in the middle of this place, because it's a lot of walking to do, there's a little place to get ice cream and chill out. So we go through half this place. It's been hours of walking because it's so big. We're getting ice cream. Is this the cream. size of a mall or something? It's bigger than a mall. It's huge. It's oh my huge. Goodness. Ginormous. Ginormous. A sperm whale. Thank you. It was a sperm whale. But, um, so there's a little ice cream place you can get, you can get, you know, chill out for a little while, get your bearings, have a seat. Um, and for some reason, we're talking about Joe Jones. Like, oh, I haven't, we haven't watched it yet. And Tomato Grandpa went into this, like, incredible fugue state, this rant, <laughs> like this incantation of just the craziest shit that ever happens in JoJo, just listing them off out of context, one by one by one by one. And it was the funniest and most insane thing in my life. And I, like, Chip almost, like, fucking died laughing at this. And then it's like, all right, I guess we got to watch JoJo. And by the time we watched it, we had forgotten all of those things because they were so weird and so out of context that it is a thing that you can just say, like, a random thing from. Nobody will remember what you said. It'll still have the impact when you watch the anime and that thing happens. Did, wasn't there, like, a clip of this at some point, I feel like I saw a clip of him saying something out of context, referencing Jojo. I don't think. Maybe that's where. Oh it was. my god! Yes, yes, there was like I was okay. recording, I was recording yeah. Josh fucking okay. losing it and him like yeah. holding his ice cream and trying not <laughs> okay. to drop his ice cream while he's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Jojo is impossible to spoil because it's so, it's so fucking insane. Just weird things out of context. It's great. It's <laughs> you'll you'll forget it by the time you get to it anyway. <laughs> yeah, Gip, you gotta you gotta you gotta go see House on the Rock. You gotta go to Wisconsin. It's a long walk. It's a long way, but it's it's oddly worth it. I don't know why. Because you're you're in I Texas mean, though. You're really far away. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Texas is very down and away from there. <laughs> I'll be have to I'll, I'll be, I have to be walking in the up direction for quite a while. But well, if you ever happen to find yourself in Wisconsin for some reason, you gotta go out of your way to go out to House on the Rock because it's a uh... definitely noted. I'm it, it's I know we've also been talking about a lot of weird otherworldly horror stuff throughout this, but also it's just kind of this is kind of this fits with that whole thing of just an unreal scale. It's just like yeah, okay, I'd believe it. Unreal scale. This hallway is in House on the Rock. What the? Right? <laughs> is it, is, okay, so that is, it closes the end. That's not an optical illusion. It just closes off like a triangle shape, right? No, or is that it's just an optical an illusion. It actually, okay. he made it so that it optically, like van it has a vanishing point, like in a mm -hmm. weird way. There yeah, because I'm looking at the plants at the bottom. <laughs> mm-hmm where they converge there. Yeah, they okay. maintain a, a pretty constant scale. What they should have done was get smaller and smaller plants. That would have been the move. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they Itty decorate it plants. for different holidays. But huh. what I remember about this was that it was very creepy to be out on this because this is actually, uh, these windows on the sides, they just overlook like a huge drop. Oh, uh, this whole thing juts out? Yeah, it's this. Oh man, Ripley's. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it's like creaky out there. Like, look, look there's like no supports. Like, what? <laughs> it looks like something off of like a construction crane or something. They just slapped the parts of a house around and said, yeah, whatever. It's wild. And like, yeah, like you're out there and it just kind of it feels like it's not sturdy. It is, but it doesn't feel like it. Also, there was a hornet's nest in there and that made me nervous. Oh, yeah. I mean, I guess that wouldn't help. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. It's beautiful though. Like this place is gorgeous. It's ridiculous. It's got this like seventies decor. It is something, yeah. Well, huh. Christmas. Oh, there's a carousel. <laughs> oh, there it is. There's Load. the one you're talking about. Yeah. Load. It's so pretty.
Weird shit. Just slightly unconventional shit. Streets of yesterday. Mm. Yeah, that's the, uh... It's like, it, it looks like a Disney theme park situation on Streets of Yesterday, because it's like a street with, like, store facades and stuff, and from, like, the 1800s or some shit, or early 1900s, I don't remember. And really expensive dining areas, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yep. Crazy shit. There's the whale. What the hell? Wait, yeah. that could you go back to the carousel? On the previous image? Yeah. I'm waiting on the stream, sorry. <laughs> Slight delay. What is with that? Is that a dog in the front, that foreground? What so the hell? This is uh, not only the world's largest carousel, but there isn't a single horse on it. They are all every other animal but a horse. <laughs> I see a centaur mm -hmm. and a dragon on the left. Oh my god. Yeah. There's, there's like a, yeah, a dapper centaur back there. Musical wonders from around the world. It looks like a lion. It looks like a weird dog. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I forgot that they've got like a ton of um, music machines. Like, you know how there's player pianos? Mm -hmm. That, yeah. but like a whole huge band, like violins, cellos, trumpets, making a ton of fucking noise. And they're all like mechanical things. Not all of them work. They use speakers. <laughs> you can tell they use so, speakers. So... Did the guy who run this place, did he actually come out in the black? Because there's so much, like... I don't know anything about... This is a shitload of money to pour into this, I, I even if no it was idea. a good tourist trap. It was 1970s money, I think. Mm -hmm. Not sure. But yeah, <laughs> I forgot about this. They have a ton of um, fake... Uh... <laughs> Fake everything. Um, yeah, you've got like the fucking like holy hand grenade of Antioch there or whatever the fuck. But yeah, <laughs> like they they claim that they have the crown jewels. It's like, no, you fucking don't. <laughs> They're, that's not that. It's real. Trust us. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, real Queen Elizabeth's bullshit. Uh huh, sure. Oh, somebody in chat said they were there in September. Ooh. How cool was that? Oh my God, the, the foliage <laughs> must have been so lovely. Cafe. Oh. This is part of the. The walking tour. There's so much carpet in this house. Like everything's carpeted. The ceiling's carpeted. Everything's carpeted. Oh, that's that's not. Oh, <laughs> oh. That's all carpet, baby. Yeah. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. <laughs> Cozy. Oh yeah, and you'll see in a second. That's the little street recreation in the house. Yeah, it's got some big Disneyland vibes to it. I definitely get what you mean. <laughs> Absolutely. Are they, are these all gift shops? No. No, really? they're not. They're just like fake facades. You can't go in them. This is this area though that's coming up that you'll see in a minute is uh where we got the ice cream down there. Take this long ramp and then you go down to this area and you can get ice cream and chill out. <laughs> and they have Man, some what? weird vehicles down there. They have like a car that was covered in like ceramic tile. It looked very heavy. <laughs> I'm guessing it didn't work. <laughs> I don't think it worked. <laughs> Oh, and the outside's mm -hmm. fucking gorgeous. There's like a big koi pond and like all this beautifully manicured, you know, greenery and stuff like that. Just crazy. Oh yeah, and if you're too tall or if you are um, a larger person, you might have some trouble uh, squeezing into some of the, the places in House on the Rock because it was made for skinny coke heads in the 70s, I guess. <laughs> probably hit my head on a lot of stuff i've got a habit of that so. yeah <laughs> how tall are you i forget you're taller than me uh, six three six four something in there i don't know damn i'm five eleven and a half did you hit your head on anything in there did you come close? um i got i came close yeah okay. i could i could touch my head on things okay God, I dangerous about territory this. then i forgot about this room it's like a room full of like organs, like like um, piano organs and stuff like that. Oh, different organs. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, not I those organs. Worried. I know. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Right. So I want to see all of my little faces. I've got the worried face. I've got the oh Jesus fucking Christ face. <laughs> got normal little little doodad face. You're getting good mileage out of all of them. Angie. Angie one's fun actually. Oh man, so cute. 
I know we only spent an hour putting it together, but I guess that's the software just worked that well and you yeah. had something in your head, so you it know just what? snapped together. I uh, had it good to go because I, I was worried it would be harder than this, basically. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I better have the art like pretty visualized because I bet the tech side's going to be really annoying. But it wasn't. Yeah, they really, the dev really did their job on smoothing that all out. Oh, right, there's like giant clock parts and stuff like that. This place is nuts. Oh, wow. I want to go back to this place. <laughs> <laughs> How long did it take you all to go through there exactly? It took like all fucking day. Like it was like a six oh, hour like situation. It. it was like amazing. It was so long. Like, and I think it was like 30 bucks to see the entire house. And like, that ain't bad. There's bathrooms throughout, you know, <laughs> like it's not... Not a bad situation there. And yeah, it's just fucking... So much stuff. Like, at the end, like, our necks hurt from just, like, rubbernecking, like, everywhere. Like, because you're looking everywhere. You're looking up and down and left and right and everywhere. And finding all sorts of weird things. Like, in the fucking ceiling rafters, there's weird <laughs> shit. So, like, by the end of it, we are like, Does your neck hurt? My neck hurts. Why does my neck hurt? <laughs> Huge collection of creepy dolls. You'd love to see it. Well, I thought I saw a dollhouse in an earlier image. I wasn't sure if it was a dollhouse or actually one of the bad storefronts, but <laughs> that answers that. Jumbo amount. Yeah, Kunster, um, what we're using is just a uh, Vito tube or video tube. And it's, uh, let me grab the link again really fast. Oh, thank you. That's a miniatures. There you go. Oh, right. There's like, you get tokens and you can use them on the machines that are all super old, like this little, like, funny bone tester. There's like little fortunes. I really don't like that clown. I don't like him either. As somebody who doesn't like clowns, I really don't like that clown. <laughs> <laughs> There's like love tester machines and fortune telling machines, and like they're all from like 1910 and somehow like they still function, basically. Oh. Hmm. Oh yeah, this is the huge room with a bajillion animatronic people playing a whole bunch of uh, fucking instruments. Do they all move around and stuff? Not all of them. <laughs> okay. Not all of them literally play those things either, but they do move around. Yeah. For the mo like some of them. Ooh, Pretty crazy. Oh, here's weird. where they all the guns. All the weird guns that are stupid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> stupid guns. There's a blunderbuss back there. Oh, I love dumb guns. Like of course the punt you do. Rifle or, the, or the punt gun. You ever see pictures of that? The punt gun? Yeah. If you ever up. want to look it up on Google, it's... Uh, huh. It was huh. actually doing too much of a number on uh, bird populations. So this? They had to say, no, you can't use it anymore. Yeah. Oh, look, it's using the correct expression by accident. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking <laughs> this? <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, wow. The two-person operation, jeez. It was very effective, apparently. So, <laughs> how do you like? Said, okay, we got to stop this. What? We'll run out of birds. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yo, take care. Did, were they just like gibbing the birds, jibbing the birds, <laughs> billions of pieces? Um, I believe it was just like a big old huge scatter shot. Jeez. So it'd just be like a cloud of projectiles. Good lord! It's like a cannon, mm -hmm. skinny cannon. Well, that's goofy. Oh, yeah, he's yep. like in a boat fucking sniping. <laughs> Good luck, buddy. Sniping some <laughs> ducks from a boat with the world's largest gun. I think I saw Wile E. Coyote in a situation <laughs> like this. It didn't work out too well. <laughs> oh, man. At a certain point, don't you think that ducks don't have any sort of advantage over you? <laughs> like, don't you want to give them like a sporting chance? <laughs> uh, Taniki, there are, I believe, huh. four expressions of what you went with, Weber. Uh, yes. Let me, let me double check. Four. Little doodad. Angie. Oh no, concerned. And gah. Which might also be like, so pissed off I can't deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> versatile. Flexibility. Very versatile. Mm -hmm. Anyway. I feel like that's the stream. I don't know. 
I'm a, little I'm a little tired of talking. It was nice chatting with you, though. I miss you. <laughs> yeah, likewise. It's been it's been a minute, several. <laughs> it's been too long. I, I, like the first and only time I ever met you IRL was at C2E2, and you were super sick, and I felt really uh, bad. Actually, twice. There was uh, PAX East. Oh my god, you were at PAX East. Holy crap, I totally yeah, yeah. forgot. Shit. <laughs> that was the last PAX I went to, because I was like, you know what? PAX sucks. <laughs> I don't think it's, it's like, that great. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to go to a con and stand in the line to play a game I don't have an interest in. <laughs> oh, I'll man. say Magfest is fantastic, though. I do want to go to Magfest. The thing is yeah. that, like, when conventions happen, like, I never know mm. when they happen. And then, like, by the time I find out, like, it's too late to get tickets for it. Um, That's the the thing with Magfest is always like uh, where you crash at because. Mm. There's like a, they always have it precede the weekend preceding uh, GDQ. Oh. And it's just as soon as they announce it, I should honestly get more proactive and just jump on the listings. There's like a specific place you, that we opt yeah. for, a number of us do. And it's just, it's like a two minute walk away, but it is a world of a difference. And it's just way better than staying in the convention center. Yeah. But as soon as the they say, hey, here are the dates, Go get your, you know, go. You can buy the tickets early, which you don't have to. You can just buy them on. You can just buy them when you get there. But the big thing is, as soon as they set in the dates, everything for um, staying at a hotel, it just evaporates immediately. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like the travel sites ha last year, the travel site that I used literally crashed. Oh my god! <laughs> but it somehow accepted the uh, the submit that I made. So every year, it's like, well. It was worse than ever this year. Next year is going to get worse. So. Oh my God. Uh, it's tricky, but yeah, if you can ever, if you can ever make a make a chance to go to it, it's very, very good. I want to. I have not been to that one at all, and I hear like that's the good one. Like. Mm -hmm. Now that there's no such thing as E3, never going to that. <laughs> I yes. thought I saw a mention that the people behind it are trying to massage it into something else or tr try to bring it back, but it's like, ah, I believe I when know. I see it. It's just like there's some article today. I don't know. You, you gotta, you gotta have like you know all the folks that want to show their shit agree with even showing up with, to that thing, yeah. right? Like, because it feels like Nintendo's kind of over it. I feel it's cheaper to just do it online and not yeah. have, and also not have a ton of competition. With all yeah, of like the, the directs other are so hyped up and everybody watches them. It's like, well, they don't really need the exposure or the expenditure. I, I so, so. I, I miss like the incredibly stupid, large press events and conference, mm -hmm. you know, presentations um, and like the tech problems that sometimes happen at them and like the cringy situations that arise from them. And it's just like, oh, man, the Ubisoft ones. Man, oh. we're never, we're not going to have those anymore now. <laughs> the Ubisoft <laughs> ones were so painful. The Ubisoft a good way. ones were so ridiculous. <laughs> the, the just dance people would just mm -hmm. come out and try very, very hard to be weird. <laughs> um, Peggle, too. <laughs> Like, I was surprised to find out there was a Peggle 2. I thought it got, I thought it never came out, but it did. God, like so many funny things have happened at those types of things. And it's like, we're never going to see those again because they're all just like pre-made, you know, really polished. The only thing that isn't um, pre-produced is, you know, the video game awards. And those are too slick. Nothing bad ever happens yeah, in those, really. Yeah, yeah. You know, there'll, they, there'll be occasional kind of... occasional social problems like, oh, that person's talking way too long. Like, but like there was the thing with the kid getting on stage. That was it's kind of ridiculous. There are a few weird things, but I know what you mean. They've kind of ironed out some of the rougher spots. Yeah. So it's like, well, dang. It's not like someone's going to have a hot mic on backstage saying mm -hmm. something weird or like a camera's just going to snap zoom by accident directly up someone's <laughs> nose. Like, you know, that shit was great. <laughs> Audio rerouting yeah. issues. Like, oh, it's like, oh, it's, man. It's, it's getting too much to the well. This feels too corporate now vibe, which yeah. I know that's been the case for a bit. But now it's kind of like, mm, mm. it's feeling a little too heavy now in that direction. So. What a shame. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Games went too corpo. You heard it here first. 
Blue jeans and blazers with t-shirts. From the you person, wear those to go from up the on person stage. who is corporately laid off. I think video games are a little too corporate now. <laughs> I've been working for corporations. They suck. Yeah, I don't like it. Whatever I do next, Garbage. I hope it's not for a large corporation because I don't understand any of it. Mm -hmm. Don't get it. I've had a... Not to ramble about it, but I, I, I've... I've gone through some several mergers and just seeing how they carve folks away. There's no sense to huh. it. <laughs> no rhyme, no reason, no logic to <laughs> it. Just, you know, throw a dart at a board and it's going to hit somebody. You know, mm -hmm. pretty much. <laughs> Whoops. Anyway, I got to pee. So let's wrap this up. Uh, <laughs> Alrighty. Thanks for thanks for uh, hanging out with me, Geop. This was fun. Yeah, thanks for having me. Come back cool sometime. Come back Come back sometime or have me on your, your Zillow streams. I'm down with that. <laughs> hey, door's wide open. You pick a weekend. We're cool. good with it. All right. Sounds like a plan, though. Thank you for the, the couple of bits and, and subs that I did not get to see because this OBS is not set up correctly yet. I will work on that before the next stream. <laughs> Sorry about that. But thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs> and thanks for watching the VOD of us just kind of mostly... We built a VTuber, but also we talked a lot about Jinji Ito and stuff. But what are you going to do? Yeah, VitoTube's great. You saw how smooth and everything that was. Yeah. Go use it if you're interested. Definitely uh, check out VitoTube. And uh, it looks like this. <laughs> That's so neat. It's just heckin' neat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See ya, VOD. Bye, VOD people. <laughs> Waving. <laughs>